It's been 52 days since there's been a harness race in the United States, and that streak has come to an end. About a half an hour ago, Duck Duck Dragon won the first race at El Dorado Scioto Downs. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Ohio Harness Horsemen's Association Facebook Live, celebrating the return of a harness racing to Ohio, the United States, and North America. Today's event is brought to you by Kim Hill Realty, Equine Equipment, Cool Wind Farms, the Ohio State Veterinary Medical Center, Hagemeyer Farms, and Centera Co-op. Hello again, I'm Frank Froz, the Outreach and Public Relations Coordinator for the OHHA, and I'm joined tonight by an all-star lineup that I am not worthy of being a part of. First, my co-worker at the OHHA, our brand ambassador, but everybody knows him as the voice, the bearded one, Roger Houston. Also joining us tonight, the editor of DRF Harness and expert handicapper, Derek Gibner, and the television host from the Meadowlands, an ace handicapper in his own right, Dave Brower. Welcome, gentlemen. It's great to have you on tonight, and it's great to have horses back on the track. It is an unbelievable feeling. It seemed, You said, what, 52 days or something like that? It seems like it's been a year. Dave, <laughs> you're going to be happy to get back to work, uh, we hope, soon as well. I sure am, Roger. We're awaiting the decision uh, on our governor, Phil Murphy, here in New Jersey. We're expecting it, hoping that it comes early next week. Remember, Monday's a holiday, so let's shoot for Tuesday. Uh, we would love to go back to work at the Big M. Our last day of racing was March 14th, if you can possibly believe that. We're about to head into the, you know, the, the meat of our stake schedule and the baby race qualifiers, which usually take place the first week of June. So, yeah, we're chomping at the bit. That's the best way to say it. But I just want to say thank Thanks to you, to Derek for coming on, Frank, who's putting together this broadcast, and everybody at the OHHA, Steve Bateson, Renee Mancino, who reached out to me yesterday. Yeah, I'm very happy to be with you guys tonight. We'll be watching some live races. We'll pick a couple of winners. We'll pick a couple of losers. But hopefully, everybody out there that tunes in will have a little bit of fun. If they've got their betting accounts fired up, good for them, and fire away. Uh, and we're going to have a couple of laughs tonight. Let, let's do it. Derek, uh, have you been keeping busy uh, while there's no live racing? Amazingly, I feel like I've been as busy as ever, you know, putting out the <laughs> newsletter each week for DRF Harness. And uh, you know what kind of got me? Maybe about 6 o'clock, 5.45, I got those, like, butterflies in my stomach, <laughs> kind of like live racing is back. Like, I'm excited and I'm ready to go. And, you know, I guess that's how you know that you really love the sport. You know, uh, the horses have paraded to the post and they're getting ready to go to uh, – to the gate for that second race, uh, make no doubt about it, $127,000 wagered in the first race. So it looks like we're off to a super night at Scioto Downs. Yeah, Derek yeah. was the first to tell us about that. Thank you, Derek. I just got a text from uh, Gordon Waterstone, of course, a horseman in Fair World. He said, wow, he said, I think I was wrong. 127000 bet in the first race. That's good for the rest of the card and the rest of the weekend. And, uh, you know, like I said, you know, we're going to be part of it. We're going to give you our opinions, uh, and we'll go from there. Let, let, let's play it as it goes. Hopefully it won't go all night because they were a little late running that first race, but that's okay. We got plenty of time. And I know the three of us have nowhere to go. By the way, the track uh, condition at Scioto tonight is fast, mostly cloudy skies and a temperature of 70 degrees. So uh, good weather for an opening night at Scioto, I would say. And there's a lot of big keys here as far as the wagering goes, because not only are they only, the only harness track going, but so many things leading up to it. Solid promotion from all parties involved, showing all the qualifiers was big. So Scioto did a lot, along with the OHHA, you know, trying to get this thing going. Yeah. Uh, the second race, uh, we here ought to talk a little about, it, since we're going to show it here, it is a field of trotters. we got nine going to the post, and the favorite is the four in Tranced, uh, familiar name, Aaron Merriman. Uh, this will be his uh, uh, drive tonight, or one of them. And for trainer William Rhodes and up at Northfield, that combination has been as potent as anything. The combination gave Aaron his 1,000th win, uh, wrapping up uh, 2019. And right now he's going to the post as the favorite here in this second race. I went 4-1-3-8. I like him tranced. Did you guys get a chance to look at the second? 
Yeah, I, I, I'll go three, four, one, two, just to just to give it. I mean, they're heading. They're actually the gate is in motion right now. I've got uh, the feed from Sciota pulled up on my four NJ bets TVG account. Derek, let's let you key in before they spring it. I went one eight four. I felt I'm like we kind of on, took so it easy there, it. and uh, hopefully he'll come up with a much bigger mile here from the inside. All right. Well, here's our first live race to show you. Barry Vicroy, track announcer at Sciota Downs, going to the post for the second. The five horse star chip went right out and grabbed the early lead for Kurt Sugg, but moving up on the outside is entranced. And Aaron Merriman now to take uh, the lead. The seven to five betting favorite is on top as they went over to the first quarter in 28 and one. Racing third is Whittyville. In at the pylons, fourth is Tickle My Fancy. As they pass the stand for the first time, racing fifth, the CR Blazing Beauty into the turn for Jeffrey Smith. Moving up on the outside, here comes Brett Miller with Ostego, the eight horse beginning the chase. Going to pick up some cover as they race into the turn, go on to the halfway point. They're over to the half in 58 and one. On to the backside, and Entrance continues to show the way. Powering up on the outside, here comes CR Blazing Beauty and Jeremy Smith. Now second, he's off ahead as they battle nose to nose down the backside, and CR Blazing Beauty takes the lead, followed closely by Whittyville, closing on the outside as well. Now second, dropping back third is Entrance. Uh, he's at it for tonight. Moving on the outside comes Star Chip. Now fourth, now third. Three quarters is in 126 and three. They've got an eighth of a mile to go. And into the stretch on top of the field at CR Blazing Beauty. Whittyville trying to close on the outside. CR Blazing Beauty. Whittyville with every stride on the outside. Gets up. One, three, and two in the second. Well, it's a good thing we got Roger to call it since apparently it didn't show up on the screen. We tested this before we all went on, didn't we, guys? That you it, could it, see it when I had it up there. It worked. So we're not before. really sure what we, happened, but we have we have the ultimate faith in you, Frank. We're not worried, and thank God Roger well, picked up the call. We're going to keep trying, so bear with us, folks. On that, it's early in the game, um, so we're going to hope we got the rest of this thing up and running when we get to that point. Um, if not, I got another idea for the next one coming for the third. Right. Uh, um, we're going to see if that might work, but we're going to try to figure that one out. Um, but, you know, it's great to have Roger on the call. Now, with that being said, what we're uh, talking about trying to do here is um, we all made picks. I'm going to try to call up the card. Um, so we're going to be able to see the card. Um, we're also going to um, uh, then may, I'll put up our picks. We, uh, You guys all sent them to me today. So it'll be very interesting to see what our picks look like, um, you know, I'm with the experts, so all I got to say, gentlemen, is if I beat you guys tonight with picking winners, we're going to have a big problem. That's Can all I, I got to say. get credit for that one? I yes. want to know if I get credit for that one. I, yeah, I you got to win. You can send them all there. Yeah. I look, so you get it, though. We're going to give you credit for it. So. And if you made, if you made the exact we'll box of our three picks, you hit it a nice one, because my long shot at 8-1 to one was second and raced great. So uh, we're off to a good start here. Uh, plenty more races to go, so don't get shut out. Try to figure a way to... Do it. So let's. I'm going to try here to see if we can get the old uh, uh, card up for uh, race three. Let me see what we got here, and uh, hopefully there it is. It looks like we got it up there now. So uh, by, by the way, the order of finish for the first race was one three two five one three two five in the second race at Toyota Downs, and there's your field for the upcoming third race. It's a field of seven to go poster. We've got six Philly and Mare races on tonight's 12 race card at uh, Scioto Downs. This is a field of seven. Philly and Mare's non winners of 3,500 in the last four starts, also eligible $7,500 claimers. And they've got something new uh, uh, going to the post here. Uh, seven of them, uh, one of the shortest fields of the night, but uh, in a very competitive field of horses. The betting favorite uh, will more than likely be, uh, well, 
I'll wait and let the public say. I'm going to go 1475. I like Park Lane Glamorous. Tyler Smith drives for his dad, Jeff Smith, the seven-year-old mare, but betters delight. Uh, this year, six starts, a second and a third. Qualified a winner on May the 16th at Scioto. Went pillar to post from post one in 154 and two. Final quarter, 28 and two. And a very impressive uh, qualifier, the best qualifier of the field of seven. All horses in Ohio had to qualify to race uh, this year, starting things out for the second time. I like 1475. How do you see the third, uh, Dave? Well, I went 1725. Uh... Roger, and that qualifier by Park Lane Glamorous was accomplished well in hand. You know, she was well rated up front by Tyler, and then when he uh, you know, when he chirped to her, uh, she scooted off in good fashion. She's got some good back class against the field like this. And again, you know, the rail is going to be a big plus. It's she qualified from the rail. She's got the rail here. But you got to give a little respect to a guy that uh, we should always respect when he shows up at any racetrack, and that's Trace Tietrich. He's driving the seven. Here's Hoosier Honey. Good luck to Barry announcing that about six times throughout the uh, race. It's a, a driver change. I don't know if he's driven her before, but uh, uh, somebody else qualified her, and she was very good from a rail position as well. But it just doesn't look like she's got all that much speed. So uh, 1725 for me. Derek, how did you see this one? I went a little bit of a different way here. I do agree that Park Lane Glamorous is the horse to beat, but I'm a little bit worried, too, for her, her last 42, 9 for 116 lifetime. Doesn't seem like a horse that likes to win as much as finish second and third. So I went with what I hope will be a little bit of a long shot that opened up at two to one was MJ's Reflection, the four. Uh, I think it's one of those lines similar to what you got from Woodyville last week in the qualifier, which just kind of sat at the back. This horse, that was never clear, was under a clear hold in the stretch. Uh, I think uh, this horse has a little bit more in the tank than what we can see on that line. And if you look back when it was racing at the Meadows, was in a lot of 12-5 claimers. This is more of a 7,500 claimer. So I think this is the, a good spot for this horse. What's your numbers, Lee? My numbers are 4, 1, 2, 7. I'll pop that up. By the way, that uh, being said, go ahead, Roger. Uh, Trace Tietrich has driven uh, Here's Who's Your Honey before. He was driving the horse at Miami Valley and shows uh, – uh, win with the horse uh, back on February the 10th in 156. So uh, Trace Tietrich, uh, Dave, uh, quite familiar with Here's Honey, Who's Your Honey. He's also familiar with the outside post, and that's going to be this mare's biggest problem here tonight. He's going to have to try to leave at least a little bit because I don't think he'll sweep the field from last. But uh, she deserves respect. So does that barn, Kim Daly. They win a lot of races uh, in your state, uh, Roger. And uh, if she had drawn a little bit better, I probably would have put her on top just for the value play. So I'm at 1475. Well, we had those pick numbers up there just uh, briefly. Uh, I also got Barry Vickroy's numbers uh, uh, tonight, and in this race, Barry Vickroy, who was seeing these horses all the time, he went 7-5-1-3. He likes that uh, here's who's your honey from the outside post. If you look at here's who's your honey, I mean, if you look at that qualifying mile, it was a solid second there, and the horse that uh, beat her is actually in the open. Uh, if you look, it's... Uh, the three horse, I believe, in the open, excuse me, let's see, you know, it's the one, Gypsy Merlot actually beat her. So went against a pretty nice horse. These are 75 claimers. That horse is in the open. Good point. Did anybody Again, see what we're with us we try to get these things up? Go ahead, Derek. Uh, I'm at 1475. Derek goes 4127. Dave at 1725. And Frank, 5271. Did anybody see what they wagered on that second race? 46,159. 46,159. It really dropped off that much? Wow. Well, well, the second race, second half, the double, is always the lowest uh, wagered race usually on a race program. Okay. You also lost about 20,000, 25,000 in pick four money from the first race, too. Okay. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. Hey, Roger, one quick thing for the fans that are tuning in here. You know, not everybody has betting accounts and, and uh, ability to live stream and things like that. 
Uh, let everybody know what the schedule is for the Scioto races on TVG tonight, which may be a first of all time to see the uh, races from Columbus, Ohio. What I heard uh, from a press release that Scioto sent out today, uh, the races from uh, 8 until I believe it's 10 p.m. Uh, will be broadcast on TVG. Uh, so that should include the featured races as well. But uh, they will not join uh, or show uh, Toyota races until 8 o'clock this evening, so another 45 minutes. All right. I think I just got a message uh, that they're at least showing the uh, minutes to post, you know, and uh, in their lower right-hand corner of the upcoming races available. So that uh, oh, maybe... TVG. Yeah, I've, I've got it on. i got to yeah. get up and go take a look at it. There's a race uh, from another track on right now. I'll, I'll yeah. double check that. But uh, at least well, they, could, you, you see the that could be the case. That, <laughs> that could be the case. They may have changed their plan. Yeah, with them, you have to be in a second race. Shows. Second race, win, play, show, exact to try, superfecta, and the beginning of the pick three. Three, four, and five races. For the pick three, I went one, five, eight. I like Park Lane Glamorous. I'll take uh, my Tweed Heart in the fourth. And in the fifth race, I go with the eight, a rival. One, five, eight for my pick three, starting here in the third. I don't know if you guys looked at pick threes or not. Or... Well, we have top picks, so if you want to just give out top picks, yeah. we can do that. And I've got the first two the same as you, Park Lane Glamour's here in the third. I've got my Tweed Heart, the five, in the fourth. But I've got a Bomberoo. It's my long shot special of the night in the fifth race, and that's Brady Galliers on number nine, John's Baby Girl. Got a little bit of a break with a scratch in there, so that may help her, but she was loaded in that qualifier. And if she can somehow get into the race or if there's enough action to bring her into it, watch out. I don't think she's going to go off at 12 to 1, but she'll be, you know, still a decent value play. I'll tell you, Brady Galliers in the qualifiers that I saw at Scioto, all of his horses, I think with the exception of one, raced very competitively. So it looks like his horses are ready. And that's a great point. And you asked me this question earlier today, so let's get into that while we've got a little bit of a time. What is more important, you asked me, the qualifying miles that you see or the form from back in March. And it's a, it's a debatable argument, so let's have it. Go ahead, Roger. What do you think is more important? I put them about equal. I will not I, – I, I have to look at the what they did back in January, February, and March. You, you just got to look at that. But a super qualifier uh, would hold precedent, I would believe, over what they were doing back in March, unless there's a wide range between the horses in March uh, that are in that particular race. If if somebody's been going two seconds faster in March, uh, I, I might put a little more faith there. Derek, you got opinion on qualifiers to fast performance? I'm much more interested in what the horses did in the qualifier. That being said, I'm not so much interest, interested in their form when they last raced as to the classes they were in when they last raced. You know, uh, is this class that they're racing in now much lower than they were before? Plus, they threw in a little bit of a curveball where there's not a lot of claimers. You have a lot of horses, especially tomorrow night, you're going to see racing in uh, starter allowances, basically, where these horses were in for claiming prices, but they're not as eligible to be claimed. So those are kind of be tricky conditions where you might have horses that are in slightly easier or slightly tougher races now than they were before because of these new conditions. Good point. You, you mentioned those races about you know, not eligible to be claimed. Here in the third race, these horses apparently are eligible to be claimed. At least I see some claiming tags on, on these horses. So they must have a certain level that horses are not eligible to be claimed, I would guess. Well, it, it was a great debate amongst the harness racing people leading up to the reopening of racing. Listen, if you've been feeding, you know, this horse and, and getting training bills for three months, should you lose the horse in the first start back? Is that really fair? No. But, you know, racing secretaries can fix that by either bumping up the claiming price, you know, in certain situations. Yeah, they may be $7,500 claimers, but they're only eligible to be claimed for like twelve five. You know, that would deter most people from claiming them. And, and I get that argument, but that's that's a decision of racing secretaries, and the guy at Scioto is Jason Roth, and he does a wonderful job. Yeah. Derek, any comment on? Listen, I, think, 
I had no problem with the way they're doing it. I think it, it makes sense, you know, to some extent. You know, some of these horsemen, they've been, you know, waiting months and they deserve the chance to get to race their horses. And But you've also seen they have some claimers on these cards. So if there's some guys that don't mind, they can put their horse in for a claiming tag. I mean, it's always tricky when you drop your horse in the box because sometimes you're going to drop it in one class and you're going to end up in another class just because a class won't fill. So... You never know exactly what you're going to get, but I, I think it's nice that the, the tracks uh, and the race secretaries have put together this way that the horsemen who don't want to lose their horses have a chance to win some uh, money here in purses. Agreed. Well, here are our picks one more time for the third race coming up. So uh, that's what they look like right there. Roger and Dave going with the number one uh, Park Lane Glamorous. Derek's got the number four. MJ's Reflection, and I'm going with the number five, Rosie's Apples, as they continue to warm up. And while they're warming up, we want to thank some of our sponsors. Roger, if you could thank some of our uh, early sponsors who have come out to help us put this thing on uh, before they get to the gate. Tonight's presentation is sponsored by Kim Hill Real Estate. Standard Bread owners Kim and Randy Hill are thrilled to be supporting our industry. Offices in Dayton and Portsmouth. In Dayton, give them a call at 937-344-8559. And in Portsmouth, call 740-352-8340. And by Cool Winds Farm in Lima, Ohio, a full-service standard bread breeding facility standing seven of the Buckeye State's most popular stallions, including Danson Yankee, Rockin' Almadus, Lucky Chucky, and Caragioso. And by Equine Equipment, offering discounts for those worlds on New Holland agriculture and construction equipment. Mowers and more from industry leaders, Toro and Exmark, as well as Ohio-based farm paint and Tenda horse products. Well, we're getting set. Now, this second one, we're going to try something different. So for, the, for those people that have not been able to figure a way to watch it, I've got a second monitor here. And we're going to hold it up like this, and we're going to see if we can. You guys tell me, how's it look? Are you able to see it? Better than nothing. Yeah, it, it's, a little yeah. White, it's a little white balanced, but, you know, that's okay. Anything is better than nothing. What about audio? You're, You're going to get audio? We're going to, we're going to try to have Barry on the audio, too, once they get to, once they get to the gate. So, but no, we know. tried it, and... Uh, I'm going to see again one more time if we can get this screen share to work where we had the uh, uh, the monitor up and everything was ready to go. And uh, let's see. That was it. Let's see. Now there. It's got, can you guys see the screen now? And what do you see? Nothing yet. Right. Blank. Okay. Blank. Well, I've got it up on mine, so, but unfortunately you guys don't. So, uh, so that's uh, probably not going to work the best. So. We're going to have to figure that out me to, on our, our technical. Are you, are you telling me this time to be prepared? <laughs> <laughs> be prepared, Roger, just in case. So, um, But, yeah, uh, so I'm, it, it was working before we went, we went live, but for some reason now it's not working live. But we'll uh, try to get it figured out and see what we've got as uh, they're still trying to, to get ready to, to go with race number three. And they're they're behind when, the are, when are they talking about New York getting back? They're right. going to the gate. Yeah, I'm, be, I'm behind then in what I've got. Field of seven. Billy and Mayor. Yeah, Roger, one. give us the call. Well, you don't think you're going to get it? There you go. No, there you go. Dave's got it on his better than I've got it on mine. Mine's behind, so. I'll, I'll try to hold it steady. It's not It's not easy. <laughs> you got to raise the volume? or Not Roger's bad, though. Call. Not bad. I, I can raise I, the volume because I lowered it. Now bring it up. <laughs> You're right. good. Go, Roger. Okay, I'll go. Here they go. I'm going to help. They're off and pacing, okay. going right up for the lead. MJ's reflection racing second. That's Parkling Glamorous taking a seat third. As they race around the turn, go on to the first uh, eight. Racing fourth, Rockers Alley. Out and moving on the outside from the two hole comes Parkling Glamorous. Now moving to the top as Tyler Smith takes the lead as a field of seven race by the opening quarter. 
opening quarter, 27 and 3. Passing the stands first time. Parkling Gamera shows the way. MJ's reflection is here second, racing third. As they pass the stand to the first time, coming to the 3 8 mark. As they race into the turn, that's a Virgin Air racing fourth. Rockers Alley out and moving on the outside. Here comes Jeremy Smith and Beach Journey from six. Now fifth, trapped in at the rail as they race around the turn. Rosie's Apples and treading the field on the outside. Here's Hoosier Honey, the half, 56 and one, 28 and three, second panel. Down the backside they go. Park Lane Glamorous has the lead by a length and a half. MJ's reflection is right there second as they race into the turn. Beach Journey continues to close on the outside third. Racing fourth, the end of the turn. That's Rocker's Alley at the three-quarter mark. One, twenty-four and three. Twenty-eight and two. Backside. And Park Lane Glamorous has opened up. Here comes Hoosier Honey on the outside. Three wide into the stretch. Coming home. It's Park Lane Glamorous with the lead. Here's Hoosier Honey closing on the outside with every stride. Park Lane Glamorous. Here's Hoosier Honey. Park Lane Glamorous. Hangs top to the wire. 153. Two fifths. Well, Roger and Dave with the winner there, picking the number one horse, Parkling Glamorous. And uh, we're Photo not going to discuss place. where uh, Rosie's Apples finished on that one. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, When it gets close to Scioto, you, you don't want to try and read it because I know from the announcer's booth at Scioto, uh, it's a funny angle. So if it's close, uh, I don't try to separate them too much. Roger, I'm so glad you said that. I wanted to bring that up. I got three emails and texts and Facebook messages about that angle that greatly favors the outside there. So keep that in mind, folks. If you end up thinking you won and you lost a photo, that's probably why. It greatly favors the outside there. Or clean glamorous. We both had Derek and Dave both had their phones up. If we could just go with one, it got a little confusing. Yeah, yeah. So Derek, which your one phone looked, looked which... like it was... Which one was Theirs better? looked uh, more was before yours was, Dave. Yours was a little behind. Okay, good. We'll stop with mine then. I know I had the volume up too. Plus, it, it was hard for me to actually just hold it steady here. But <laughs> if Derek's got a better look, we'll do it that way. All I did was I yeah. took my video camera off my top of my screen and turned it around. Oh, wow. Okay, okay well, good. <laughs> yeah. that, that seemed to work well. So that's what yeah. we're going to go with on that then. The order of finish is one, four, seven, six. One four seven six. Parkling glamorous. MJ's reflection. Here's who's your honey and Beach Journey to wrap up the superfecta. Three to five. I, I, I can't say I would have been thrilled with that horse at three to five coming through the stretch, but uh, but it's another uh, exacta box in. for us. I had a straight exacta. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Roger had. Yep. Roger had the one four seven. Dave had. Uh, Derek, if he boxed, it was fine. Yeah. Dave had the one Woo. seven. So I had the trifecta. I didn't realize that. Three to five, yeah. seven to one, and ten to one. I think that Renee Mancino started drawing us, maybe. Nope, she disappeared. <laughs> that was a brief hello. In there for a second, the executive director of the OHHA. Hey, one thing about this tonight, if I'm going to have to call these races, at least my race total for an calling races will climb. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. We could dispute that because if you're technically not on site, does it still count? Hey, listen, <laughs> I get a lot of simulcast races from other tracks calling at the Meadows. So it, this one from Grove City counts at right. Sour Downs. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> I mean, I got to get to that 190,000 flat bill. Piece of cake. By the way, there is no win whatsoever at Sire to Downs. No win. The flag's hanging straight down. And a lot of handicappers like to know the wind direction or something, but absolutely no breeze at Sire. Okay, we're going to the fourth race. Did we give payoffs, Frank? You want payoffs when they show them? It's yeah, still on official. Show them. I haven't seen it yet. Well, race is I mean, still unofficial. Is it, oh, is it still unofficial? Yes. Yep. I didn't know whether you wanted me to read the payoffs or not. I, I guess we probably should read the payoffs. Oh, yeah. 
Since they might be a little bit of a coat delay, too. Me, uh, oh, here they come here right go. now. now it's a here crazy. we go. The one, Park Lane Glamorous, three twenty two forty two twenty. The four, MJ's Reflection, $6, $4. The seven, here's Who's Your Honey, $4. The one, four, Exacta, seven forty. The 50 cent try, one four seven twenty dollars thirty five cents. Twenty cent super, one four seven six thirty five dollars and six cents. Time of the mile, one fifty three, two fifths. Try to call the up handle the took a nice boost there. And see what that looks like. The handle boosted up there nicely. Eighty eight thousand six ninety two for race three. Hi. That's 262,000 for the first race. Four. And the fourth race coming up. Card for that coming up. There it is. There's your fourth race. Right. Field of eight to go poster. Phillies and mares, non winners of 6,500. The last four starts, optional 15,000 claimers. Also, ultra non winners, four pair mutual or 30,000 lifetime. Pacers in the fourth, the field of eight, purse of $9,000, win play show, exacta try, and superfecta wagering. By the way, the purses tonight at Sauda total $143,500. Total purses for the 12 races, $143,500. In this eighth race, I'm going to go with the five, my tweed heart, uh, Brett Miller driving for Virgil Morgan, Jr., and that combination has been very potent over the years at Scioto Downs and other tracks in the Buckeye State. My Tweed Heart uh, shows two wins this season and nine starts with a third. Uh, the fastest up at Northfield on the half-mile track, 153-4, and four, qualified on May the 16th. And this was kind of disappointing. Uh, left from post seven, cut it out, fractions of 27-2, and 56-1, and 25-3, uh, was second by a length at this stretch, finished sixth, beaten four and uh, quarter lengths, final quarter 29 and four, mile and 155 and two. So uh, didn't come home all that well and got passed rather handily by a number of horses. But I'm going to say I'll they'll bounce back on the qualifier. I'm at 5472, my tweed heart. All right, Roger, I'll pick up the ball from there, and we are in agreement on the top pick. And I'll make a couple of different points here. You have to be a little bit uh, okay with some of these horses coming back off these layoffs, especially the females. Uh, my tweet heart is a seven-year-old mare. looks like she could have been a little too hot on the bit in that qualifier. So I would love to know if any equipment changes were in play tonight, and I would love to watch her score down. But obviously, we'll try to watch that uh, you know, while we're discussing that. Uh, one other thing about trainer Virgil Morgan Jr. when it comes to Scioto Downs, you, you can't ever throw out a horse that he trains. And he gave a lot of good quotes uh, in this weekend's weekend Harness Racing Weekend Preview, which you can find on HarnessRacing.com. That is a production of uh, Gordon Waterstone and Kathy Parker. They reached out to him, and he had a lot, a lot of interesting quotes about his 11 entrants over the course of the weekend. He's got three in tonight. Overall, though, his theme was very simple. He said, I didn't ever bring these horses down from training. I wanted them to be ready when they went back to race. So keep that in mind. I know he's only got a couple in tonight, but if you're going to play tomorrow, he's got eight in, and you're going to need to know that information. So check that out. I'll let Derek talk about his uh, weekly column uh, when he gets an opportunity there, too. But as for the fourth, I am 5243D. Yeah, I, uh, I it was nice to see Roger actually had my top pick in his top picks this week, this time, you know. <laughs> I was getting a little worried there. My top pick is the four, Western Secret A. And uh, just a couple of notes here. J.D. Perrin sent out the hor a horse in the second race. It was Dave's long shot pick, was a three horse. Ended up finishing second, went a big mile. Now you got another J.D. Perrin horse. So maybe this one will be ready to go too. I like that qualifier a lot. Came away at the back of the pack, followed wide. You know, finished really good energy. It, it showed me this horse was ready to go. I'm certain that the blind switch racing people who sent over a bunch of horses to Ohio and changed trainers to get, I'm sure they didn't send all, the, all these horses to uh, be up the track. Uh, those classes at Yonkers, that non one is a six, is, can be a pretty tough class. I, I think this is a really good spot for this horse. Uh, I think Virgil Morgan's horse, uh, my tweed heart, though I only picked um, her fourth, 
plays a role in here. I mean, could be speed tightened off the qualifying mile. His horse raced well. I believe in the first race, finished second, put up a good mile. Um, my second pick up front for Ida. Interesting name there. Another one showed speed in the qualifying, tired, you know, has a little bit of class. If you look back at the lines, now one is at 8,000 races, open handicap at Miami Valley, and made 170,000 last year. So maybe there's a little bit more in the tank there uh, with the start under her belt. So your numbers? My numbers are four, two, seven, five. There, are, there are all the picks for the fourth race. As you can see, Roger and Dave again agree. They're both going with the five, my tweet art. Derek with the four, Western Secret A. And I'm just going to go with Faith Prevails. Nobody even has Faith Prevailed in any of their picks. That's why it's probably not even going to end up on the board. So. <laughs> You never know. Well, at least you got Aaron Merriman. Model. That's and that that was part of the reason I went that way was was uh, saw Aaron was uh, driving and uh, went that way with that one. So we'll do that. And while we got a quick break here before uh, they get going, in fact, uh, uh, I think they're getting ready to head out uh, to the track. Want to thank some more of our sponsors, the Ohio Veterinarian Medicine Medical Center. Advanced Specialty Equine Veterinary Care in partnership with your veterinarian, call 614-292-661. And by Hagemeyer Farms, Boarding, Breeding, Foaling, Break the Bank K, Western Terror, and Knob Hill High, currently standing at Hagemeyer Farms. And by our friends at uh, Centera Co-op and Purina Animal Nutrition, continuing their partnership to help Ohio horsemen and horsewomen with innovative feeding solutions for your horses. If you have a question on what to feed, Expert horse nutrition and care available from Kathy Green, the Sentara equine specialist. And I want to thank all our partners. Um, we had put together a feed program to help these horsemen during the tough times that they were not racing. No money was coming in. We had a number of partners step up, offer some great feed discount for the uh, horsemen and if uh, for any reason you didn't know about it you can go to our website ohha.com the information is there um, to help you through these tough times to feed the horses so we want to thank all of our partners um, with that and it looks like the horses are on the track now for um, the fourth race hey roger quick we're going to be here through at least the go ahead Roger, quick note here. You know, Derek brought up the name Upfront Florida on number two here. And any time in harness racing you see the words up front, that reminds us of our late friend Ed Mullinax from your state right. of Ohio there. How important was he to the business overall, the business in Ohio? He even sponsored the Hamiltonian one year. Uh, I knew Ed Mullinax oh, 40 years ago. He was one of the most down-to-earth individuals that I ever knew. Uh, if you'd meet him out, you'd never know that he was the biggest, the largest Ford dealership in the United States of America. And the reason we got up front, his, his uh, philosophy was upfront pricing. So he named all of his horses up front. Uh, he was just a great individual. Uh, I cherish all the time that I was able to spend with him. And uh, you mentioned his sponsorship of the Hamiltonian and everything like that. Uh, just a great individual and uh, so good for the sport of harness racing. And, of course, for those here in Ohio, he's he was a proud Buckeye. I believe it. Thank you. I thought he deserved a mention. Yeah. Ed Mullinix. Dragon again. Stallion, a lot of dragon again, it's all over. Betting favorite here, the five, my tweed heart, eight to five. I'm known for picking favorites, as Dave Brower knows. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what you said today, Roger. You said, I think I picked all favorites, is what it looked like you had uh, earlier. That's what you told well, me during the day. So, Doing the morning line. Since 1968-69, at every track I've worked at, it's a little hard to get out of that morning line scenario. And I can't see a long shot winning 
in any race that I handicap uh, for one reason or another. I, uh, Dave likes to look for long shots. I know that uh, from working with him up at Tioga and Delaware and things like that. But uh, when I look at a race, I can't see a long shot winning a race for one reason or another. Yeah, I, I, I'm. Do you think any have a chance I, tonight at all? What? Do you think any long shots have a chance tonight at all? E oh, even yeah. without that thinking, being somebody, coming out the first time out after a long layoff. Somebody texted me today, says, give me a long shot tonight. <laughs> and I'm trying to think which race it was that I did. But it, I thought it was a great, oh, in the eighth race, Peggy Sue. Got the rail for Brady Gowers. All right. Now, what he wanted was a long shot that would hit the ticket, not necessarily win, because he liked the two favorites. He says, give me one that will be there for third or better. So I give him Peggy Sue. All right. Peggy Sue's the second choice morning line. How's that a long shot? <laughs> the betting closes right before the race. Just because they're on the morning line does not mean that they'll go off any ways near that. And uh, most morning lines, they're close, but they're they're not 100% accurate. The four here is I'm nine to two morning on line, and he's one. three to two on the board right now. So it just goes to show you. I mean, if people are looking for a long shot, how about the seven in this race, cruising Coco? If you go back and, you know, we go back to that Whittyville thing again, you know, this horse wasn't really that bad at the back. I thought uh, she actually had some sneaky pace at the the end of the mile, and there's some speed in here. Maybe she can get lucky, and she looks pretty good on the track right now. Well, Derek, she's going to need a lot of luck and a lot of things to happen in here to get here. The outside post is so intimidating, and when you see, look at Cruz and Croco, you know, she's literally going to get away next to last or less, so she's going to have to have one of those hot pace scenarios. And I, I honestly think she's just a little too cheap against a field like this, her class levels and things like that, but we'll see. You and I often disagree. We love to chat about it. We love to have our own, you know, individual uh, discussions, and then they run the race, and one of us is right, and one of us is wrong. Sometimes we're both wrong, so that's that's the part of racing that's fun. And then when you know what we do, we turn the page and move on to race five when that happens. So it's all right. <laughs> just just like a driver, he yes. finishes up the racetrack, forgets it, gets on the next horse, and goes on. You know, I was doing a podcast, and I forget which driver I was talking to, and I said, "Was that hard for you to at the beginning?" He says it was very hard when you were not driving every race. And until he started driving, you know, 10 races a night, he, he those losses stayed with him. But then once you have to come right back the next race, uh, you're able to live with them. True. Pity, pity the poor amateur driver. He drives <laughs> once a week. <laughs> and if he has a bad drive... Oh, that lives with him still. <laughs> You're right, Roger, too, because they do beat themselves up uh, about that. And I'll tell you yeah. what, when it comes to the amateur series, the the uh, GSY and things like that, we've had some unbelievable mayhem events at the Meadowlands, whether it was on the pace or on the trot. I know not everybody likes to bet on the amateur drivers, and I get it. But I'm telling you what, you want you want to watch an exciting race. We've seen some real doozies. We've seen guys try to open up by 20 at the half. We've seen guys go three wide at the three eighths. You know, it, it's it's fun to watch whether you're betting or not. I get it. <laughs> As someone who's driven in a bunch of those, yeah, no one you too. wants. When you're in those races, you you really want to win them, and there's no worse feeling than driving two and a half hours up to Monticello from Long Island and breaking behind the gate and going home. I drove all the way from Cannonsburg to Monticello for an announcer's race and finished dead last. You can imagine what it was driving home. <laughs> we got them going to the gate here. Right, looks all like right. they're ready to go. Derek, if you can Derek, get your camera up. ready. You guys make it rough on me because I don't get a chance to study these horses while they're scoring down. But you're a true professional. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> true professionals. We can make mistakes just as easy as anybody else. <laughs> they're all down behind the gate. The gate swings around. The there they go. Tira. 
off and pacing fast out of the gate on the outside. My Tweed Heart with the lead. Jancy Images here second, getting away third on the inside. That's Beach Bar racing fourth as they race around the turn. Racing fifth, going to the first quarter mark. On top of the field and showing the way, it's My Tweed Heart. And Brett Miller by a length and three quarters. Jazzy Image and John DeLong right there second. Opening quarter in a speedy 27 flat. Racing third up front, Florida. And Randy Tharps racing fourth. Beach Bar as they race over to the 3-8 station. Next comes Western Secret A. Sits fifth, ready to come to the outside. Following the cover will be Faith Prevails as they race around the turn. Next comes Cruising Coco and Moon to Depend On. Trails the field. Halfway home in 55 and 4. On to the backside. My Tweed Heart has the lead by a length and a quarter. Right there, second is Jazzy Image on Brett Miller's helmet. Down the backside they go. Racing at the pylons. Up front, Florida. Moving on the outside. Now comes Western Secret A. As they race into the turn, moving with cover on the outside, Faith prevails as they race around the turn, off a half and 55 and four. And the battle's on at the three-quarter mark. On the outside, Western Secret A grabs the lead. Pulling the earplugs was Chris Page at the top of the stretch, and Western Secret A draws away with every stride. My Tweed Heart is there, second, Jazzy Image, third. On the outside, Faith prevails at the wire. Western Secret A. Jazzy Image is second in 152. <laughs> well, it looks I like Derek gets his first winner of the night, or at least uh, our second. broadcast of the first broadcast night. Had the, had the one earlier before we had the official picks, so he's got two now. All right. Yeah, I mean, listen, this horse, uh, as you saw, the J.D. Perrin horse raced really well early, and uh, this one got bet pretty heavy on a 9-2 to two on the morning line, went off 6-5, to five, and uh, sometimes that's all you have to do is watch that hot barn and just play them all night long. Western Secret A is J.D. Perrin, the trainer, Chris Page, the driver. That is a... First win in the U.S. of A. That is right. So it's a lifetime mark, 152, five-year-old mare, but Western Terror, out of life's secret. Hey, Derek, quick comment. How happy yeah. were you to see that Chris Page qualified this horse and then ended back up on her in this particular spot? I mean, listen, obviously I want a top driver driving the horse, you know, at least someone who I feel is, you know, above average, let's say, and Chris is well, well above average, especially at a track like Scioto. But quite honestly, I'm not a big driver guy. I kind of prefer to have the middle of the road guy because if if you give me another capable guy who's not in the top five in the standings like Chris Page is, Maybe I'm getting two to one here instead of six to five. And I feel like any guy who's average or, or right around average can get the best horse home. And this horse was clearly the best horse. He was tonight. That's absolutely correct. But I want Chris Page on my horse. I've watched him drive <laughs> for the last couple of years. And let me tell you, you want to talk about a guy that's got some talent and is going places in our little industry. He's going places. You know, from yeah. top down, the drivers at Sciota, are very competitive, the top 10. You know, a lot of tracks will have three or four drivers that kind of prevail. Ohio goes pretty deep when it comes to drivers. It's a great driving colony at the Miami Valley, Hollywood, Dayton, Northfield, and also at uh, here at Sioux of Downs. I'll tell Order 4325, 4325. Let me throw one more guy into that list because when he left the Meadowlands, even after winning a driver's title, Brett Miller made a big, big statement that he went back to his home state of Ohio. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't wait to get to see him, you know, jug week last September. And I said, how are you doing? You know, basically, he said, the best move I ever made. So for himself, for his family, for his business, you know, and, and you know, I congratulated him, and I said, "Well, I'm really glad to hear that." You know, because you you had success, you know, in the metropolitan area, which is not easy to do, and then you went back to your roots, and he's he's 
you know, he's one of the best out there. Yeah. He he came back to Ohio for his family more than anything right. else. You know, no question about it. And I remember a few years ago, a top driver in the States went to Canada, Luke Wallet. True. Yeah. His family. Yeah. They are people. 45,000 was the total bet on that race. I don't know if any of you guys caught that, but it was $45,000 in the pool yeah. right, right around there. So, uh, Four, five, so the five, handle five, has uh, really tailed off from that very first race. And I don't think, uh, I know I didn't expect it to tail off anyways near this much. I thought it would still hold forth, but it, it has, we've right now got uh, 160, 242, 80, just over 300,000. Yeah, and right. you know what, Handle, the four. Handle right. the four, Western Secret A pays four sixty three dollars two forty. The three Jazzy Image six dollars three forty. The two up front Florida three eighty. Exact is sixteen sixty fifty cent try thirty six dollars fifty cent pick four thirty two twenty five and the twenty cent super returns thirty seven dollars eighty two cents. Fifth race coming up. In this one, scratch the four. Right, the llama up. llama. Race that we got here. The four. Hold on. Llama Llama has been scratched. That means five through nine will slide in a spot, go into the gate, ten remain in the trailer in the second tier. All right, there's your fifth race. In this race, this is a Philly and Mare. Non-winners of 11,000 last four starts, optional claiming $30,000, first 15,000, field of pacers. I'm going to go with the, oh, I can't believe I'm picking an eight horse. Yeah, Arrival. really. Arrival. <laughs> Jessica Smith, the trainer. Aaron Merriman, the driver. Uh, Arrival, two of eight this season, 153 and one at Miami Valley. Won the qualifier May the 16th in 154-3, and three, final panel 28-4. and four. So raced well early on, especially uh, towards in the month of March. The fact is, uh, won two out of three in March at Miami Valley. I like the eight arrival over the 5-3-2, 8-5-3-2 in the fifth. Go ahead, D. I'll let you go up second. You let me go up second. Well, and you just picked fifth... the winner. So, you know, it's like uh, golfer's honors. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I'm, I'm playing with the feed, trying to figure out what happened. The Seattle feed went down for a second here, but I'm oh. sure it'll come yeah. right back up. It's um, not your phone because it went down on my iPad as well. Yes. It just popped back up again as they crossed the wire in the replay. So. Yeah, it's, it's back. Race number five, I went with number six, Tiffany Rocks Oz. Um, I, I watched that qualifier, another horse. You'll notice a trend here. I like these horses at the back of the pack in these qualifiers, who I noticed a little something from them. And this horse uh, was trapped at the back of the pack. Didn't show a lot, but really wasn't bad. Came home at 27 and change. It looks like a bad mile when you, when you look at it on paper, but it really wasn't. Go back looking at that form from previously, as we discussed, you know, how much does it mean? Back on March 13th, in a similar class as many of these other horses, you know, including the five who's going to take money in this race as well, went down the road in this class at five to one. Chris Page, Ron Burke, top connections. I, I think she's got a shot to go down the road again in this spot. You know, let me fly low, the five horse. Another horse who raced really well in the qualifier, rallied well from the back of the pack, races in these class with this with these horses all the time, always rallies well, but she's kind of a little bit of a victim of the pace. You just don't know what kind of pace she's going to get and what that's going to do for her. And uh, I think Arrival, the, the eight who Roger picked, certainly qualified well, and the, the seven Sugar Dance uh, was impeded, had no chance, has a shot in here. 
Derek, let me let me ask you about qualifiers too, because you and I are students of qualifiers, and this was one of the most wide open races that we're going to talk about in the show tonight. So as you can see, we've got four different top picks, and that does not surprise me. Explain to everybody, in case there's people watching this evening that aren't, you know, harness racing and betting experts, that the qualifiers are not competitive contests. You're not really trying to win. You're trying to meet a time standard and let your horse finish well. Explain that. Yeah, I mean. What happens is the trainers want to go out and they want them their horses to have a good mile. You know, they want them to finish up feeling like their horse did well to give them some confidence and courage for races going forward. And when I'm watching a qualifier, I'm not so much looking, oh, this horse won by five lengths. I'm looking to see what the driver's doing. You know, is the driver using the whip or not? Or does he have a nice hold of the horse? I'm looking at the back of the pack to see horses that, you know, you know, you don't need to win these races. So I'm looking for horses who are just kind of sitting there who look to have a little bit more in the tank left, but really they're not going forward because the driver's kind of just sitting on them waiting for a real race, you know? So it's not so much exactly what where they finished and what the charted line looks like so much as it is what happened during the race, which is why it's so key to be able to go back and actually watch those races with your own eyes. In this particular case with Tiffany Rock's Oz, the last three times that she raced on the lead, she got a little tired at the end. She did manage to win one of them, but she got tired. So what are the chances that Ron Burke told driver Josh Sutton on that morning last Saturday, I want you to race this mare from behind and just let her finish? Well, there's a huge chance that he did, especially when you're starting from post eight. I mean, like we said with Whittaville, starting from the outside post, there's no reason to go up and kill your horse and, 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 and race them really hard. There are some horses that need it. There are some horses that really you need to push them in the qualifier to get them ready for a race. Like a foiled again type wasn't a big trier, you know, in, in those kind of things. But, you know, when he got into that race, he, he wanted to go. So you maybe you had to push him a little bit more than you have to push a different type of horse. And maybe Tiffany Rocks is a horse that you're going to put her on the gate tonight. She's going to fly off there, you know. She could use an easy race, and it was fine. Roger, when you're handicapping qualifiers, how much emphasis do you put into uh, qualifiers? Zilch, usually. (laughs) (laughs) It has to be a super qualifier to to impress me, but I don't know whether you guys mentioned it or not because I had to get away for a second. But on Tiffany Rock AS, uh, wait, maybe I was looking at the wrong horse. No, I was looking at the wrong horse. Okay. Never mind. Take it back. I saw an impeded uh, in the qualifier on the seven sugar dance. And uh, I just wonder how much that affected that horse. I know he was back of the pack, but then he got impeded going to the half. And those Woodbine, uh, the Woodbine Mullet Park lines look pretty good on this horse, eight for 17 lifetime. The problem is, you know, does she get into the race from an outside post here? And we should mention that the fifth race starts the $10,000 guaranteed pick five. Um, so that's certainly a big thing. Hopefully we'll get a really big pool here. We got 20-something thousand in the pick four in race one. So hopefully we'll get 30, 40,000 into this uh, mm-hmm. pick five. Yeah, the handle will go up considerably on this one. Speaking of that, Santa Anita and Golden Gate are on their last race. So that should help the handle pick up maybe a little bit once they go dark. And then it'll be just Sciota. Los Alamitos and Charlestown will be the only three tracks racing. So hopefully that'll pick up the handle a little bit as well. Guys, let me ask you both a question, Derek and Dave, Roger, you too. A lot of debate once everything's shut down about whether horses should even have to qualify again. Thoughts on that? Who do you want first, Frank? Whoever. You got it. You go for it, Dave. All right, I'll take it. Now, listen, this this is – everybody's split right down the middle here. And, you know, it, it all comes up to the state racing commissions and things like that. I understand that Ohio, you know, they had to qualify everybody. And it was a Herculean effort to get all these horses qualified over a couple of days last weekend and last week at several different venues. And I know the weather absolutely – sucked if i can you know be so kind if i can say that on the air but listen the job that the track crews the job that the race offices did the job of the horsemen to get their horses there with all these enhanced safety protocols was herculean it's the only word i can use canada they're not going to have to qualify 
Jersey, we're still unsure because we're waiting for the go-ahead first from our governor, and then the acting director of the Racing Commission, her name is Judith Nation, will make a division, make a decision, and she'll give us guidance. If, if, if she forces every horse to race in New Jersey to qualify, we're going to have 50, 60 qualifiers over two or three days. You know, so every, every jurisdiction is a little bit different. I get it. Uh, but you could argue at both sides. I actually had an argument with somebody on Twitter the other night, and I, I, I hate to argue, but, you know, I thought he was wrong. He thought I was wrong. We, de we decided to let it go and say we, we agree to disagree. What about you, Frank? What did you think about that? Do you think they should have to qualify, or if they have a good line in the last three months, they can go in the box? I think you meant that for Derek. I'm just well, asking no, the questions ask of you. the experts. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? To me, if you to were me, betting, I, I think – Right. I, I think, you know, in situations, if they had already been on the track in 2020 and had already qualified, I think that was fine. But the horses making their first start of the year, you know, that would have had to qualify under the old rules at some point, I think should have had to qualify. And it's like you said, it was a Herculean effort by everybody to try to get that many horses in. We had over, I think, 1,200 you know, over like five or six days oh. between Scioto, Northfield, Delaware County, Warren County fairgrounds. Um, it was just, and you know, it would have been nice with nice weather. But the weather, as you said, it sucked everywhere <laughs> during those days. I mean, the biggest complaint was it's the end of May. And, you know, I was down at uh, Warren County shooting uh, the videos of that. And we were standing around. We're all in sweatshirts, long shirts, jackets, all wearing our masks, trying to stay warm, going, this is crazy. And then it started raining. Uh, and, you know, and then when I was at Scioto, I was upstairs shooting it. And, you know, the window was open. The wind is blowing in. It's raining. I was, you know, a lot of better things I could have been doing than sitting out there. But, you know, it was just that. But I, I think the ones that hadn't qualified needed to, the ones that, had already been on the track. I was, you know, fine with that. Derek, your thoughts? I'm a gambler at heart, so I'm always going to think that the gamblers deserve to have a qualifying line, and that's my general position on this particular topic. That being said, I think these were special circumstances. These horsemen and owners have not been getting checks and not been earning any money for almost two months here or more in certain circumstances. And I think that these are special circumstances where you just drop the rules out and you let them race. Uh, that's my opinion here. I think that I, and as a better, you know, maybe I wouldn't bet those races because of the fact that you're just going to let them race. But I think that the horsemen and the owners deserve it because of the fact that they've been on the sidelines for that long, not earning money. So that's the way I look at it. New York made that decision on Tuesday. The, the racing commission there decided to, you know, extend the uh, qualifying rule there. So, and they're going to allow horses to come back without qualifiers. And I think it was the right decision in this particular instance. But on a normal basis, I'm completely against, you know, horses uh, racing without qualifying. Roger? No opinion. Okay. All right. Fair We're enough. governed by racing commissions and what they <laughs> say. On, Roger. We're gonna you always do. have an opinion. No, uh, not on this one. I'm not. Uh, I think two-year-olds have to qualify. I don't think there's any question about that. Uh, whether it's a 30-day or a 60-day or 90-day, that uh, decision has to be made by the Racing Commission such, and uh, what I think is not going to make any difference. You know, so I, I like to go neutral on a lot of subjects, believe it or not. <laughs> hey, I got I to ask uh, Dave a question. Sure. Tiffany rocks. A.S.? Yes. Tiffany Rocks, Oz. Oz. That was confirmed by Annette Lorenzen. Uh, Ken Workington, I think, reached out to her at one point. It's Tiffany, any, anything like that. Tiffany Rocks, Oz. Wrong. Like, like think, think eight, no? She's wrong. Okay. Because if you ask the owner or ask the other breeder, he would disagree with you. Well, that was her father, wasn't it? Her late father? I don't care. I don't know. I was told that they wanted AF okay. or ACL okay. or how you pronounce it, ACL to Yeah, that that was that that is actually um, her father, her late father, Carl Eric Magnuson. He goes under that nom de. I know when I was over in Europe, they pronounced it AS. Well, they might not have had the conversation with the with the with the daughter or the or the father to verify that, but. 
I, you know, we, we, we can agree to disagree on that one, too. <laughs> well, you, call, you call it any way you want. Nobody's going to question you. Oh, yes, they do. Oh, yes, they do. I'm probably the only announcer in the, in the United States that says, uh, like, Sugar Dance A or Sugar Dance. I, I always put the A because there's horses that have like names. What about the Sometimes NZ? the only difference is the A. Do you go NZ, too, for New Zealanders? NZ for New Zealanders? I would if it was that way, yeah. Okay, all right. I mean, are you going to throw out the, the K for key? No, I think because <laughs> that's part of the actual name, right? And then he'd get, he'd get really pissed. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually an interesting debate because at DRF, I would always, when I wrote stories, I would write Lazarus N, and I would always use the N, the A, whatever it was. But the people on the thoroughbred side, they feel strongly that it shouldn't be there. And I was actually told that I had to not use it because they didn't. They felt like horses coming over from Australia on the thoroughbred side or wherever they're coming from wouldn't have that distinction there. So, so you got a direct order. <laughs> yep, basically I got a direct order to take it out. So I, I've compromised. If I have the horse's name in the, in the headline, I don't use the A or the N, and in the story I use them. <laughs> you know, I, I can't come up with the exact horse's name, but there was one year that I looked it up. And there were two horses racing in the United States. One had the A and the other didn't. Right. That happens a lot. So the A is part of the horse's name. That's the way he is registered. That's the way it appears on the program and such. All right. Uh, so I've always felt pronounce it. Here horses go going to the gate. gate. Go to the gate. Race number five. Derek's got his camera in position. Roger, you're up. Like Pacers are all in behind the gate. The gate swings around the turn, and there they go. They're off and pacing, going right out for the lead. That's Tiffany Rocks AS to grab the lead. Racing second as they race into the turn. That's West Lucky Cam. Racing third, down along the pylons, Colt Icon. Fourth on the outside as they race around the turn. Racing fifth, the trailer, Keen Santana. Sixth at the pylons is Newsday. Racing seventh, that's Let Me Fly Low. Eight the sugar dance as the race by the quarter in 28 flat. Up and moving on the outside. That's Arrival and Aaron Merriman battling for the lead. But on the inside, Chris Page says, no, 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 take a seat. But there's no seat to take. He's hung on the outside. Tiffany Rocks AS has the lead on the outside. Going to have to go the long mile now as they race around the turn. Going to the halfway point, Arrival. They're starting to fade a bit. Up the inside, West Lucky Cam. Now second at the half and 55 and four. Off a quarter and 28. Down the backside, Tiffany Rocks AS with the lead. West Lucky Cam is here second. Three wide. Here comes Let Me Fly Low and Trevor Smith. Now third, now second. Also moving on the outside. Here comes Sugar Dance and Trace Tietrich at the three quarters. 123 and two. Round the final turn, Tiffany Rocks AS has a commanding lead by a length and a half on the outside. Let me fly low, racing third, West Lucky Cam trying to hang on down the stretch. On top, it's Tiffany Rocks AS closing on the outside, stride for stride. Let me fly low, let me fly low, and Trevor Smith throwing away over Tiffany Rocks AS and Colt Icon. One fifty one three fifths. Big mile there. Well, Derek was the closest. He had uh let me fly low finishing second. Um so did Roger I and I had him third. Dave, you didn't even have let me no. fly low in your four. I'll tell you what, Frank, here's my here's my notes that I have on her. Needs a trip, which she clearly didn't get, 
you know, that was a big mile, and past tired ones in the qualifier. So I was 100% wrong on this one. I decided to take a swing against her at 4-1. to one. So let's give the credit where it's due to the guys who came a little bit closer. That was a big, big mile for the John Ackley trainee. 4-1 to one on exactly that morning. Right. Right. second or third choice in the wagering at 5-2. to two. I had it exact, just I had it the wrong way. Got to flip it around. I had six five. It came in five six. <laughs> Tiffany rocks. If 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 uh, Roger's horse arrival didn't uh, destroy my horse, yeah, early, <laughs> early on in the race, she probably yep. would have been a, a winner there. Uh, unfortunately, let me fly. Uh, had a really nice second over trip, and Tiffany rocks had to go a little too fast. I forget who it was that uh, hung uh, Merriman out to drive. Wasn't going to let him in that two hole. That was the leader, Tiffany Rocks. Paige. No, no, no Tiffany. Oh, was it was time. Tiffany Rocks? Yeah. So the yeah. handle Seven. up almost, uh, you know, up, what is up it? to 79,000 that 79, time from the previous race. You know, I don't know about other announcers, but when a race is over, I can't even, sometimes I can't even tell you who won the race. <laughs> Well, then you got to look to see who's coming back to the winner's circle. Then you pick it up. Or the numbers on the tote board. <laughs> <laughs> Let me fly low. Trained by John Ackley, Trevor Smith, the driver, owned by the DT Stables of Washington Courthouse, Ohio. Five-year-old mare, but rocking image out of Hoddick. On the winner in 151, three-fifths. Trevor Smith, the younger brother of Tyler Smith. All right, Roger, if you could give our uh, sponsors another mention, that'd be wonderful. I'm going to pop some things up here. If you can do that, that'd be great. Tonight's presentation is sponsored by Cool Winds Farm in Lima, Ohio, a full-service standard bred breeding facility standing seven of the Buckeye State's most popular stallions, including Dancing Yankee, Rockin' Amateurs, Lucky Chucky, and Carazioso. And by Equine Equipment, offering discounts for the horse world on New Holland agriculture and construction equipment, mowers, and more from industry leaders such as Toro and Exmark, as well as Ohio-based farm paint and tender horse products. And by Kim Hill Real Estate, standard bread owners Kim and Randy Hill are thrilled to be the supporters of our industry. Offices in Dayton and Portsmouth. In Dayton, give them a call at 937-344-8559. Or in Portsmouth, a call at 740-352-8340. For some reason, the slides I had aren't working there either, so I got to figure this out. So, <laughs> But I will, our next race, I, uh, go ahead. I will tell you, Frank, that someone reached out to me uh, via Facebook and messaged me and said that he thought maybe using an older version of the program, and he wasn't able to watch it on his iPad, but he is on his PC, so maybe that has some something to do with everything. Now we're going to be working on this tomorrow, that's for sure, and even tonight as we're go as we're moving on. But let's try to get uh, take a look at race number five now, or I'm sorry, so, number six. Going to race number six. Let me uh, see if I can get that up here. Um, they haven't put the payoff. They haven't put the payoffs up yet, but uh, we'll get that. Uh, this is uh, the co-featured race of the the night coming up. And uh, I didn't even look who's in the. As soon as I saw one horse's name, I automatically picked that horse because uh, I've been a fan of her from the get go. This is Philly and Marrow's open post position one assigned. Uh, purse of $18,000, field of six. The one I've watched since a baby, two year old, three year old, four year old, five year old, now a six year old. Rose Mary Rose, one of my all time favorite mares. By foreclosure in at a pentathlon. Rosemary Rose, a winner of $558,000. Right. And also joining us is the president of the OHHA, popping in there, Steve Bateson. 
A good friend and a familiar face. Steve, how you doing through this bad weather over the last few days? Terrific. We're back racing, so the weather is irrelevant. <laughs> okay. We gave a huge shout-out just about 15 minutes ago or 10 minutes ago to the Herculean effort that was put forth on all of the horsemen, all of the people responsible for getting all of these horses qualified under the most difficult conditions. You were boots on the ground, so give us an idea of everything that went into all of this stuff, getting these horses raced through the safety protocols so that we could have this card tonight. Well, I think we got to give a big shout out to the permit holders for being willing to step up and put on qualifiers day after day after day. Northfield Park and uh, El Dorado Scioto Downs, it was a, a big deal. Um, Delaware helped out uh, two days in a row, as did uh, Warren County at Lebanon. But um, really, uh, you got to keep in mind, these permit holders had laid off or furloughed most of their employees. So most of them went with a very small staff. They brought back a few, but in a very short order, they had the tracks ready to go, which Northfield never really shut down, but they only had about four or five people there during the layoff. Uh, Scioto Downs, on the other hand, that track had set idle for eight months, and the Coons brothers worked on it. And um, really, when we got the uh, word that we could go, Joe, Joe Morris from El Dorado, Scioto Downs, said, we're going to go Saturday. And this, this was basically on a Tuesday, Wednesday time frame. We're going to go. We're going to draw horses because I want to be able to race on the 22nd, and that's today. Um, I'll, t I'll share one story. I don't know if Joe would want this shared, but I'm going to share it. We so won't tell him. Five o'clock today, five o'clock, I get a phone call, and it's Joe Morris. He goes, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm standing in the barn. He goes, you know what I'm doing? I'm standing on the start-finish line, and I've just lit up a cigar, and that's the tradition I have when I run a racetrack. I light up a cigar on the opening of the meet. And I'm looking forward to a great meet. And I thought, what the heck? Isn't that something? So, you know, there he was by himself opening night, but he was ready to go. Good for him. So I, I got to commend the horsemen. I mean, they, they had to fight through this. You guys talked about qualifying a few minutes ago. Um, I think a lot of horsemen would have preferred not to. Um, you know, the uh, director of racing really felt it was the right thing to do for the horses, make sure they were – uh, tight, uh, felt like that was the right thing for the uh, gambling public. And, um, you know, that, that was his call, and uh, we support it. We're glad to be back racing. Excellent. So um, yep. I thought I'd – I'll tell you what. Go ahead. Steve, give, give us a little idea of the, of the racing schedule over, like, let's just say the next week, because it's not just here at Scioto. You've got uh, someplace else ready to go. North, Northfield Park. We'll open up uh, Tuesday night. I think they've got pretty much a wide open slate. Um, that's uh, their normal Monday card. It will be on Tuesday. It's a really good field of horses, 15 races. I think he's got nine in each one of those um, post time uh, 605. And, um, and then Scioto resumes on Wednesday. So both tracks uh, will be full bore next week. Um, actually, uh, Northfield Park is going to race on Friday next week, which is unusual for them. But they will race a full four nights next week at Northfield Park. Uh, Dave Bianconi was working on that card today. I think Dave uh, drew uh, Tuesday's card uh, today, or I've been Wednesday's card uh, today. I think well, he's I got 15 that night. Yeah, I can confirm that because the Northfield Park Twitter account already tweeted out the free live program. So that's always a big thing for us, uh, like me and Derek, when we're promoting everything that goes on in Ohio. You give us a free program, people are going to download it, and yes, they are going to bet. Absolutely. Well, I think it's great you guys joined us tonight. Uh, honorary Buckeyes tonight. Uh, Roger's become a Buckeye uh, permanent resident. We're glad to have him here. And um, I really like how you're schooling Frank tonight. I mean, Frank's got pick. He, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's not holding up his laptop trying to show video anymore. We got uh, Derek doing that. But uh, really nice show. I am so glad you guys are here tonight and uh, enjoying uh, Ohio racing 
uh, back in North America, the first standard bred track right here in Ohio. Derek, how happy are you to be here tonight? I'm thrilled that there's any racing, but <laughs> oh, Ohio racing is actually, you know what? People might not recognize it. Maybe, you know, people are busy watching the Meadowlands or whatever other track they're watching, but they race in Ohio. These races are always exciting races. The drivers are going at it really hard out there with these horses. These horses are raced hard out there, and the, the races are, are very interesting. You know, you don't get a lot of races where they just line up in post position order and go around the track. These are guys that are going for it, and you see it in these races tonight. You know, they're they're entertaining races. I, I think I think everybody's a little bit hungry. At, um, the competitiveness of this shows. Um, everybody wants to get back at it. I, I, we should call out one other individual. Is Jason Roth? And, we did. Uh, he, yeah. He had Hercules effort, I think, the first day of <laughs> 358 horses he had to sort through for qualifying. So uh, I know he's there tonight. Um, Jason is tonight watching this. So uh, uh, you probably already did call him out, but we'll do it one more time. Absolutely. Hey, listen, well, while we got ahead here, here and take a look at the field. So yep. I'm going to share the screen here and uh, let's take a look at this, uh, who we got for this uh, race coming up here. Uh, there we go. So we should have, uh, this is, the, as Roger said, the first of the, the two open races. And uh, Derek, who do you like in this one? I went with the six Golden Paradise. I thought the qualifying effort was really impressive. Two, mo two moves in that effort and actually made a second move brushing it right around the half back to the front and just, you know, blew away the competition. Uh, so she was my top pick in here and she loves to win 30 for 87 lifetime. Rosemary Rose is second, uh, also solid in the qualifier, solid in open handicaps uh, all the way around. And then uh, Gypsy Merlot, third, uh, also won a qualifier, raced well, likes to win 11 for 18 last year. Just to throw something out there, 10 to 1 on the board, Sally Fletcher A, J.D. Perrinbarn, red hot today, maybe that one. Roger? I'm going three, four, six, one. Uh... Every time Rosemary Rose races, I pick her to win. Rosemary Rose. <laughs> Dave? Sometimes Roger can't be objective. And listen, Rosemary Rose, my mother's name is Rose. So you know how hard it was to pick against her tonight? But I'm on board Derek Givner's boat in this particular spot, Golden Paradise. Yeah, I know it's the outside post, but it's not the biggest field in the world. She can do whatever she wants. Trace Tietrick here on the Indiana bread. Uh, for trainer Tyler George. She's beaten Rosemary Rose in the past. At the moment, she's the better price at 9-5 to five versus the odds on 4-5 to five on Rosemary Rose. But this is going to be a good race because my notes here tell me, listen, there's a lot of speed in here for a field of six. And you kind of, when you're handicapping, you kind of got to figure out which open for the Phillies and Mares do you think is better, the one you know, versus Miami of Miami Valley or the one at Northfield, because it's a combination of these two fields and uh, it should be a good one. Well, there are picks. I'm going with uh, number four, St. Lad's Gidget. We got Dave and Derek sitting on Golden Paradise. And then Roger, just based on the name, Rosemary Rose, he likes the horse. So that's what uh, we look like for race number six as they are uh, getting ready to go. And, uh, you know, so far through the first five races tonight, the handle's been up around $300,000. So, you know, trying to, you know, see if they can get to that million-dollar mark. And now with just three tracks racing us and uh, the two thoroughbred tracks, uh, Los Alamitos and Charlestown, maybe the handle picks up a little bit and we can get uh, to that point. So, but, uh, so they're still, uh, still not ready to go yet on race six from Sciota. We're at 385,000. There you go. For, for what it's worth, I like the one horse. I, I like a 163. Uh, Al Tomlinson uh, from Michigan. This is a uh, very competitive horse a year ago in the fair circuit, the Sire State uh, Buckeye Stallion Series. I think she was all across the board. Um, this is a tough, tough uh, filly, now a mare. I don't know if she's up to this, but in a short field like this, she should have good track position. I don't think she'll cut it out, but this is a tough feeling frisky from one of the toughest trainers in Michigan, Al Tomlinson. Good point. 
A lot of good Michigan horsemen have won a lot of races in Ohio. Sam McKee taught me about that many years ago. Well, they're behind the gate. Derek's got his, his camera up. And Roger, you're, it's, it's all you now. Pacers are all in behind the gate. The gate swings around. Da -da -da. There they go. off and pacing going for the lead that's rosemary rose on the outside now takes a seat as they race into the turn in between horses now to take the lead mythical virgin up on the outside saint lad's gidget on the inside third gypsy merlot gets away third racing fourth golden paradise ending up fifth is rosemary rose racing six trailing the field sally fletcher a alignment opening quarter speedy 26 and 4 the end of the lane first time coming to the 3 8 mark on top of the field it's st lad's gidget and aaron merriman by a length and three quarters racing second mystical virgin gypsy merlot racing third coming to the outside here comes golden paradise and trace tetrick first up on the outside getting the cover on the outside chris page moves rosemary rose Trailing the field, Sally Fletcher A at the halfway point, 55 and 2, 28 and 3, second panel. To the backside they go, St. Lad's Gidget with the lead, racing second on the outside, Golden Paradise. Third is Mystical Virgin, Rosemary Rose, fourth on the outside with the cover, racing fifth, Gypsy Merlot, outside six, Sally Fletcher A, three in, three out. Three quarters, one, 23 and one. And St. Lad's Gidget opens up by length and a half. And here comes Rosemary Rose. Now third, now second on the side. Less than an eight to go. It's St. Lad's Gidget, the leader. Rosemary Rose on the outside, Sally Fletcher A. Rosemary Rose, Sally Fletcher A on the outside with a final surge. Coming to the wire. Noses apart. Rosemary Rose and Sally Fletcher A. The mile, 151, two fifths. No shortage of speed there. <laughs> hey guys, one uh, quick thing before we talk about it. Get there. Wow. I, I can confirm that race was shown live on TVG. I don't know if that was the first one or the second one, but they are now on board. They showed that from Gate to Wire live. Well, that's good to know. So, I didn't realize Steve, my apologies for not up. getting your pick in there. I forgot you were sitting there, so sorry about that. <laughs> Here we go, a little closer look now at the finish, and it looks like it was uh, number three, Rosemary's Rose, get, getting the win. But then again, yep, it's going to be real close with that angle that you guys talked about where that camera was. How would you see it, Derek? Yeah, it came in 3541. Uh, looks like 83,000 wagered on uh, this particular race. And how about another JD Perrin horse there? A nice price there and finished second, another good mile. But I don't think anyone, any one of us thought that that race was going to come out, you know, with the four horse on the lead with those fractions and the <laughs> three and the six at the back. <laughs> yeah, that was a special one. You know, even though short fields, you know, things like that, you don't expect things to happen. Uh, perfect drive by Chris Page there to, to uh, abort, I guess, his game plan leaving the gate. It looked like he was leaving, and then he yanked back. He ended up following one of the other live horses in the race. He probably was forced to move just a hair earlier than he would have liked, but she had enough to dig in and hold on. Got to give it to Roger Houston. He's been watching this mare since she was two. She's a pretty tough horse, isn't she, Roger? No, I'm getting concerned, folks. My iPad is down to less than 5%. Plug it in. <laughs> so that may have been the last race we'll be able to call. You know, uh, David, uh, Chris, Chris looked like he was trying to time the gate, and, and he did time it well, but I, it looked to me like once he got up in there, he saw to his left and he saw to his right, both of them were going to 
hard. And Chris made a, a, a really a nice decision there. To, uh, what was the opening quarter? Twenty six and three. Yeah. Twenty six and something. Yeah. So hey. you know, as it you know as it turned that uh, he kind of reeled him in and, and a really a tight finish. Uh, uh, unfortunately for uh, for some, um, it backed up Gypsy Merlot through the field and had to come out. I think she ended up four. Really a nice race in a in a short field. Well, she got a check, and one of my favorite comments from Hall of Fame drivers, and many of them, is that, listen, all game plans and plans go right out the window when the gate springs, and only the true great ones can adapt and make it work. Well, it's pretty clear Chris Page is uh, <laughs> on his way to being a great one. We spoke about that earlier, wait Steve. For them to post yeah. Go ahead, Frank. For them to post up the numbers, I'm going to just uh, thank a couple more of our sponsors. Um, you know, being sponsored by Hagerman Farms, Boarding, Breeding, Foaling, Break the Bank K, Western Terra, and Knob Hill High, currently standing at Hagemeyer Farms, and by Centera um, Co op and Purina Animal Nutrition, continuing their partnership to help Ohio horsemen and horsewomen with innovative feeding solutions for their horses. Have a question on what to feed your horse? Expert horse nutrition and care available from Kathy Green, Centera's equine specialist, and by the Ohio State Veterinarian Medical Medical Clinic, Advanced Specialty Engineer Equine Veterinarian Care, working in partnership with your veterinarian. Call 614-292-6661. So I want to thank them for uh, helping us uh, with this tonight, and uh, you know, and uh, still waiting for them to put the uh, Final numbers up, but again, you know, eighty-three thousand in the pool. So we, we talked. The next leave, the pools go up. The the betting increased a little bit. So uh, that's a, a a nice number to get in that race. There, Frank, uh, while we got yeah, while we got Steve on the horn here, I want to ask him a couple of questions. First of all, how difficult has it for been it. for you to adjust your schedule for the Ohio Sire, Sire Stakes and the Buckeye Stallion Series going forward? Uh, just to be general about it, I know there's too many dates to talk about and things like that. And then after that, give me the status of the Bateson stable. What do we have? What are we training? What am I going to watch in September? Give me the update, buddy. So, so the uh, standard bread develop uh, meeting was um, Wednesday, and we adjusted the schedule. Uh, Jason Roth kind of orchestrated that, and the standard bread development group uh, was supportive. We were supposed to start on June the 6th. They moved that back, so uh, now it's June the 12th, and June the 13th will be leg one of the three-year-olds, both uh, Philly Trotters, Philly Pacers on uh, Friday. The following night at Northfield will be the Colt Trotters and Colt Pacers. Those same three-year-olds come back two weeks later, and they flip. The Colts will be on Friday night, and the Phillies on Saturday night. I think it's the 26th and 27th. Uh, Friday night at Scioto, Saturday night at Northfield. The schedule from there uh, pretty well holds true for uh, the Ohio Sire Stakes. The Buckeye Stallion Series schedule will come out probably tonight. Uh, we're finalizing that. We moved it back a little bit. And um, I, you know, the two-year-old legs are all scheduled to go the same dates that we had planned. So the one thing horsemen were very uh, felt good about the money is there. We're going to race for what's advertised. Uh, the Ohio Sire Stakes final will go for 300000 I think everybody's pretty enthused on that. The Buckeye Stallion Series final uh, is still set to go for 60000 As for my, as for my uh, limited stable, I've got uh, two horses in the Jason Brewer barn. One races tomorrow night, Lion Rock, a horse we bought from uh, New Zealand. Uh, he's in tomorrow night. I've got another one with uh, Jason uh, named Stay Gold. It's in on Monday at uh, Sayota Downs. Um, I train one myself with my son. It's a homebred two-year-old, uh, Rockin' Amadeus, a horse. Um, hopefully we'll make the fairs or maybe a, a Buckeye Stallion Series race. And um, I've got a homebred with Sandy Beatty, a fellow OHHA director. It's actually, uh, this is a filly out of Southwind Papino, which a lot of people might remember here in Ohio, that Sandy Beatty uh, trained and drove and he owned a piece of, and he had a very small crop. Uh, there were one filly and one colt, and I've got a filly, a uh, two-year-old filly named April Surprise, 
that was born, I think, on April Fool's Day out in the field because uh, Sandy didn't realize she was that close to being due. So it was a real surprise. But uh, that's uh, that's the Steve Bates and Stable. Thanks for asking, David. Hey, anytime. Thanks for the update. Hey, Roger, did you get your iPhone charger? <laughs> it's not charging. Oh, no, oh. that's not good. <laughs> oh, and I'm trying to tell you guys. I tried to get it on my phone. Uh, no, he's going to have to do it by looking at Derek's phone. Well, <laughs> he gonna... better get a bigger screen. Uh, I got a plan. I got a plan of attack here. If TVG <laughs> does show the next race, I will point it at my TV screen, and I will put the volume on, and you will be able to hear the actual call. All right. That's a good backup plan, I got to admit. We're going okay, to try, try that one. Hey, that, that so scared me. Uh, we'll go to the, the seventh now. Let's take a look. That scared me into it because my charger all of a sudden started working. <laughs> there you go. All right, so well, here's the, the I might be all seventh. Right. Ah, trying to get the seventh up here, folks. There we go. There it is. Let's see. In the seventh race, we've got Phillies and Mares, uh, field of eight to go poster. There it is. I'm going to go with uh, 8432. I like Libby's idea. Another uh, horse out of the Burke stable, Chris Page, a uh, winner of the qualifier by nine and a half lengths in 53 and three. 8432. Go ahead, D. Something's got to be a little wrong here because I also picked 8432. <laughs> Um, I, I love the qualifier, Libby's ideal, was absolutely never asked during that qualifier. Looking back on the lines, those open handicap races were a little too tough for her. I think this is a, a much better spot, and uh, I see her going down the road here for the Burke Barn. Steve, you got a pick in here? Um, I like the eight, but I will tell you, of course, I think could give a little bit of uh, value is take a look at this seven horse. Not an impressive qualifier, but this is a pretty good horse that raced against, I would consider, a little tougher company out at Yonkers. I'll be curious if any adjustments were made. I think this one can hit the board. I, I, I like an 8-1-7-4. Uh, All right. Well, I don't know what these uh, this Roger and Derek guy are talking about. It's 8-4-2-3. It's not 8-4-3-2. It's 8-4-2-3. We all like Libby's idea. I tweeted out and Facebooked out, best bet of the night. Like I said, Derek and I, student of qualifiers, if you watched her go last Saturday and if you if were able to pick up the replay, she was outstanding. And when you finish a mile like she did, you know she's sitting on a big race. Again, it's the eight hole. It's a little hard to pick, you know, a, a good standout. But, you know, she, she, she just lays over this field on class alone, in my opinion. This is a great spot. Ron Burke, probably when he entered her, figured she would be in a much tougher race. But she fits this. And when the sheet came out, he must have looked at this race and smiled. <laughs> Looking at this race, uh, if you look at the four, like the eight, I've got the eight coming second, but I got I choose you, so we'll. Uh, if you look at the four here, Princess Rogaru, right, was actually raced against uh, Rosemary uh, Rose, who just won and uh, finished second and made two moves in that qualifier. So maybe that's something to uh, consider as well. Yeah, Derek, I think I'm going to be all right this year because. This race because my uh, iPad is charging and going up, so I'm okay, I think. <laughs> okay. It's up to you if you want to take a race off and you want to get the, the Barry uh, Viceroy a, a little shout, you know, we could do that. Yeah, check with the director. Let, let me ask Derek a question, you know, in terms of handicapping, because it has to do with number two, I choose you. And I had a lot of people message me and tweet me today that they thought this was a very, very live mare. Now, what we're dealing with here is a big barn change. Now, I, I was too lazy to actually go up and see if she sold at Harrisburg or if she had sold at OnGate.com here, but the VIP Internet Stable, these are guys that have had the ownership uh, groups uh, for a long, long time. They were one of the originators of this particular process. We applaud them. They've had some good horses. Uh, I'll, I'll find out later where they purchased this mare from, whether it was privately, like I said, or at Harrisburg or whatever. But we do have the barn change involved. She had a tough trip in her qualifier. Uh, Tyler George is an excellent 
excellent trainer, and we know Trace Tietrich is an excellent driver. They team up to win a lot of races together, uh, both here and uh, in Indiana. So, Derek, you know, w how important is the barn change to you? I mean, it depends on the barn change. I, I think Tyler George, obviously, you know, is a pretty good barn, and, he, you know, he gets them to go. There's no doubt about it. But I didn't see this as a huge barn change for me. Plus, you have the layoff as a concern. How long did he have the horse? You know, was this a horse that didn't sell in a sale and was just a, a COVID kind of thing where they needed some money and they decided to sell this horse off? Uh, or, I mean, I, I really don't know the circumstances behind it, so I didn't know how to treat it. I went off the qualifier. I wasn't overly impressed with the qualifier. I thought this horse was sitting in good position and just flattened in the stretch. I think the races from Dover were... You know, they look nice on paper, but they were two months ago. I mean, I don't know that that form is going to hold up here. So uh, I took a, as you like to say, Dave, a wait-and-see approach. Yeah, I like that. Don't steal all my lines, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Betting favorite here right. at Even Money, the eight, Libby's Idea. Five to two on the two, I choose you. And at nine to two, the one majestic virgin. Yeah, I mean, Roger, even money's about the right price, I think, on Libby's idea. That's what you would expect in this spot. Uh, and you know, the the it seems like the handicappers kind of have it right with uh, where the board's sitting right now. Roger, how about you on the barn change? We already got your you know your call on qualifiers. What about this one? Which one are we talking about? Well, any barn change when you're handicapping. You guys, he's neutral. He's neutral. Steve, you're, yeah. laugh, you're laughing, Steve, but you you ought to see all the things I'm trying to do. Memorize the horses in the seventh. And all, that, yeah, 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 yeah. all right, Roger. Yeah. I'll stop asking you questions. <laughs> it all depends on the trainer. The yeah, barn change depends on the trainer. Well, I'll tell you what then. You you and How about... Any horse that moves into the Burke barn, because you're you're pretty familiar with that particular outfit. Uh, you know, Two seconds he's, faster. Yeah, he's an unbelievable trainer, but he just gets more out of horses than any other people. Explain that. Well, the one thing about the Burke stable, and you can do it when you've got 300 horses, they train the living daylights out of their horses. And if they develop a problem and they have to turn them out, that's what they do. They get the best out of them at that particular moment in time, and if they have to stop with them, they do. A regular trainer, if if they got a slight injury or something, they baby him a little or something like that, uh, don't race him as often or something, uh, the Burke Stable is just totally the opposite. Uh, they train them hard and race them hard. I'll, I'll follow up one more thing because you made a statement once that I'll never forget, and I've seen it uh -oh. in action. Are we, are we at the gate now? We got, we got time. No, we're for not us. at the gate yet. All right. Ronnie Burke, Ronnie Burke and his team are endless workers. They work harder than anybody else. And I've, I've seen this in action standing next to him when he got a phone call about his barn in Indiana. And he knew every horse, what equipment they wore, what their schedule was going to be. You know, when yeah. you outwork everybody, you, you should have some success. And, you know, when, when they were in racing – 35, 40 horses a day on some days. He enters every single horse. And like you say, uh, the big thing with Ronnie Burke, I think is his management skills, just to keep everything straight. And the other thing about the Burke stable, all the bookkeeping is done by Ronnie's mother, Sylvia. Yep. He's got like 15 computers in her office with the various ownership groups and stuff like that. Uh, she does it all. So it's, it's, a, it's an unbelievable operation. Hey, we got them going to the gate here for race number seven, field of eight. And as they go to the post, the six to five favorite is the eight horse, Libby's Idea. Is that TVG there, Derek? That's actually not. TVG is showing Remington right now. Yeah, T typical yeah. TVG. <laughs> Pacers are all in behind the gate. The gate swings around the turn, and there they go. Two 
Porter off and pacing. I choose you. Goes for the lead. Satisfaction racing second. Up on the outside, Libby's idea and Chris Page. Three wide into the turn. Go on to the first eight. Getting away fourth as they race around the turn. Princess Rougarou racing fifth. Majestic Virgin racing sixth at the pylons. Tallahassee Tam racing seven. Don't mock Mia and trailing the field. Million Dollar Jim A. Opening quarter in 27 and two fifths. The end of the lane passing the stands first time. On top of the field, Libby's idea shows the way by a length and three quarters. Racing second, I choose you. End of the turn, satisfaction. Racing third, fourth is Princess Rougarou. Fifth is Majestic Virgin as they race over to the halfway point. Racing six, that's Tallahassee Stam. Moving on the outside, Million Dollar Jim A. And trailing the field, don't mock me up. Halfway home in 57 and two fifths. One to the backside they go. Satisfaction with the lead. Closing on the outside with every stride. Princess Rougarou and Jeremy Smith going after the leader. Racing third, I choose Liu. Racing fourth, Satisfaction. Up on the outside, Million Dollar Jim A. Along with Majestic Virgin, now fifth. On the inside, Stella Z. Tam. Three quarters, 125 and three. Around the final turn, Libby's idea in total command for Chris Page. On the outside, second, in less than an eighth of a mile to go. Up the inside, third. As they come to the wire, it's all Libby's idea. Coming home on the lightning lane, I choose you. Libby's idea, I choose you. Libby's idea, I choose you. And Princess Rougarou, the time, one. 53. And TVDG did well, put yeah, you uh, like put them up. Everybody had uh, the, uh, the winner there. TVG did put the race up on a split screen, and they went to uh, full screen like uh, three quarters of the way through the race. So you did get some nice exposure there on TVG. All right. At least they did a little something, you know. They handled over a hundred thousand that race. Over a hundred thousand. That was That's a race. A that, number. Yeah, that that was a race that figured to take some good betting action because there were some oh, some severe that. opinions in here. A lot of people like the eight, like some of us, and a lot of people like the two. They end up finishing one two. So pretty much everybody's going to cash, and I guess that'll that'll help for the churn, you know, for the uh, rest of the card here. Good. Good, good momentum, Steve. How happy are you? You know, w with you know the betting so far and and the excitement of the races. It's really been a good card. Uh, yeah, I think for the uh, first night back and the um, pretty enthusiastic. I mean, let's keep in mind. I mean, Sciota Downs you know, typically was handling probably a quarter million to four hundred thousand on a good night, and you know that would be with a lot of competition. So, you know, for tonight, um, I think there were some people optimistically hoping we could do three quarters of a million to a million. Um, we can we can hit a million yet. Um, that, that race was over 100,000. And this is with just advanced deposit wagering. And a lot of people don't realize, but um, on a normal night, we'd have on-track uh, wagering, which we, we don't have tonight. So... You know, it's it's got to be, I think, encouraging for Joe Morris the first night um, at the pace that we're going. I will, I'll throw a shout out in case you already did didn't do this. Gabe is not on site. We know. Gabe, <laughs> I, I know Gabe is watching. He's watching the numbers. He is working, but he's working from Lexington instead of Columbus. Yeah, he's a little bit under the weather, and he's a little annoyed about that. I'll, I'll leave it at that. But uh, there is no bigger promoter and fan and just great worker of the game than Gabe. So hopefully he'll be able to get back up there next week. And I want to give a I want to give a, a credit to Frank here too, uh, because he explained to us that as soon as Golden Gate and Santa Anita were done then we were going to get a little spike. And he was 100% right, and I hope that continues through the rest of the card. Well, just I don't want to take all the credit in the world. I had a little birdie on my shoulder telling me that. But <laughs> just so you guys know, hey, I had the exact box last race. So. <laughs> About I'm time. I'm something if I went with the box. It wasn't a big one. 
but it was <laughs> but it's a winning ticket if I cashed one. A, win, a winner's a winner. <laughs> that's hey, that's the way I look at it. And you don't have to leave with more money in your pocket than when you got there to be a winner in my eyes. You want to walk back up to that window and hand them that ticket, you're considered a winner in my eyes. So I like it. Hey you Roger, you got the prices? Four twenty two sixty. Four twenty two sixty two twenty. I choose you two sixty two sixty. Princess Rugaro three dollars. Exacta five seventy. The fifty cent try eight dollars twenty cents. Twenty cent super sixteen dollars ninety six cents. Eighth race coming up. Right. Open. Another feature, Roger. Why don't before we do the eighth race, why don't uh, we give another shout out to our. Uh, partners who have been there for us uh, today with this, if uh, you wouldn't mind hitting your list again. Tonight's presentation is sponsored by Kim Hill Real Estate. Stand Red owners Kim and Randy Hill are thrilled to be supporting our industry. Offices in Dayton and Portsmouth, Ohio. In Dayton, give them a call at 937-344-8559. And in Portsmouth, call 740-352-8340. And by Cool Winds Farm in Lima, Full service standard bred yearling breeding facility, standing seven of the Buckeye State's most popular stallions, including Danson Yankee, Rockin' Amadeus, Lucky Chucky, and by Equine Equipment, offering discounts for the horse world on New Holland agriculture and construction equipment, mowers and more from industry leaders, Toro and Exmark, as well as Ohio-based farm paint and Tenda horse products. Want to thank them. Roger, I'll mention uh, Cool Winds Farm, Randy Haynes, he's an OHHA director. He is online watching tonight's broadcast. So a uh, big shout out to uh, Cool Winds Farm, Randy Haynes and Kim Haynes. Appreciate their support. Uh, got a wider range of uh, some really excellent stallions there with Rockin' Amadeus, Lucky Chucky, Dancing Yankee. Uh, a new one that uh, Brian Brown raced a number of years ago, Santa Fe Beach Boy. Uh, so anyway, um, Kim Hill, real estate, she happens to be back in the horse business with her husband, with stable. Anthony McDonald um, uh, has a couple of horses for them. They just got back into the sport. They're very enthusiastic. And I think, uh, Frank, she was the first call when you said uh, we might need a sponsor. I think the phone's vibrating immediately. <laughs> Two minutes later, she was on the phone. And, and you know, and, and Steve, the, the interesting thing is we reached out to see if, you know, who we could get. And within 20 minutes, we had people clamoring to be a part of this tonight because they knew how people were just, you know, itching for it. They wanted it. They wanted to be out there. They want to help it. They want to help the industry. And, you know, you mentioned Cool One. We got Scott Hagemeyer, another one of our directors. Um, he stepped up as well. Equine Equipment, uh, the Ohio State Veterinary Medicine Medical Clinic, they have been a partner of the OHHA for years. Um, and Mary Spittler there was just like, yeah, we're in. We want to do it. And then, as I mentioned earlier, Centera Co-op and Kathy Green and uh, the Friends of Purina, who have been part of our uh, discount feed program and our program for uh, – uh, to help uh, the horsemen with our benevolent program as well. Um, they've stepped up as, uh, to help us out. And we, we really appreciate everybody who's being a part of this and, uh, you know, want to thank them for helping us. And uh, and what, what do we get up there? What's, what's Derek got that, there? That's, a that's Rosemary program. Rose and Sally Fletcher A the, in the Philly and Mare. In that's the winter photo from, uh, from, uh, from Brad Conrad sent over the photo for the uh, – Winner of the Open, and uh, you can see how narrow of a margin of win. And uh, seven races in here, I was just doing some calculating, and Chris Page has five wins already. <laughs> so that makes him five out of seven. And, uh, and a couple of have, and He's on uh, working in it to Broadway, um, the morning line favorite for the eighth. So let's put that up there and see if we can take a look at that as we get ready for the eighth race. Um, and see what we got here. So we'll try to get that up. Tell you what, Frank, in, in terms of the races that we're going to broadcast tonight, three through eight, there were two possible best bets of the night. The first one already won, and that was Libby's idea. 
And working it on Broadway is the second one. She's, or I should say, he's probably going to win too. He's a winning machine. Ten for twenty-five last year. Uh, you know, just a winning machine. So, can Paige make it six? Well, then he'll be the star of USTrotting.com tomorrow when they write that story about opening night, reopening night of harness racing in 2020, and he deserves it. Yeah, and I think uh, Chris is going to win this race here with working it on Broadway. Uh, how often do you see a, a three-year-old go into the open ha opens at Dayton or at any track and go and put up a couple of wins in the open at the end of the three-year-old season? That's uh, pretty impressive. The qualifier was 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 spectacular. Nice brush, one under a mile drive, and this uh, horse could be a, a serious, you know, open horse. Maybe not on the grand circuit circuit level, but certainly in the open handicaps. Uh, throughout Ohio or, or wherever Ron Burke wants to take him. And I went the four, one, six, seven here. All right, Derek, I certainly can't blame you for that. I put working it on Broadway on top too, but I just want to give out a little shout uh, to a certain pedigree line. We haven't talked much about that. And I know this can be a little difficult for people that aren't harness racing experts, but Roger Houston gave out his long shot of the night. That's number one, Peggy Sue. And if you ever want to talk about a regal, and royal pedigree well this is it this mayor is a daughter of donato hanover out of motivational who is the foundation mayor for the la montaigne family here in new jersey uh, she has produced several high dollar and expensive and and really good winners here brady galliers is in charge of this mayor now and you know he's he's going to really be in prime position in this spot. So I certainly don't blame, blame Roger uh, for making her his pick. I don't know if she's going to go off at 5-2 to two or 3-1 to one because working it on Broadway figures to be about 2 or 3-5. to five. But, you know, it, it's those two in here. Uh, you know, some people might actually give a little call to Eye of a Tiger, Oss or AS, whichever you want to call it. But that post is going to be a big detriment to a horse that can get a little rough on the smaller size tracks. But, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. We had a pretty formful uh, Philly and Mare open, and now we've got the open trot for a purse of 18000 uh, This should uh, this should be a good one, and send us out in style. It's a power-packed field with earnings of $2.3 million. These eight horses have won $2.3 million in their racing careers. I'm going to go 4 6 three, one. I told you I was going to pick a lot of favorites tonight, working it on Broadway. Go ahead, D. I already uh, gave out my picks, but we'll do it again. I went four, one, six, seven. I think working it on Broadway just uh, looks like a horse that could be anything at this point. And yeah. uh, uh, I'm, I couldn't possibly pick uh, against him in this spot. I, I couldn't either, and again, we're talking about Steve. just a four-year-old. Some of these trotters don't even get to their best until they're, you know, a little bit older. But uh, like you pointed out, you, you were excellent in your analysis that this horse was exceptional uh, stepping up to those open levels at the age of three. You just don't see that, and you don't see Ron Burke doing that either, entering these horses against such situations like that. So he must really think highly of this one. Uh, barring a mistake, he's going to win. It's a matter of who can be second, and you and I as gamblers, you know, we always try to hit the exacta or the triple, and we've got a lot of different numbers underneath, 4216 for me. Steve, who's going to be second here? I like Eye of the Tiger. I think Eye of the Tiger, they have a, a little bit of pressure early. Elliot Deaton is very steady. Uh, he sits behind this horse all the time, uh, works with Lynette Lorenzen. Uh, I think Frank picked Eye of the Tiger. I like Eye of the Tiger as a sleeper here. Okay. Uh, with, with that, I'm going to thank you guys. I'm going to sign off. I appreciate Derek and David for coming tonight and uh, Frank for organizing this. Really appreciate you guys spending the evening uh, talking Ohio uh, racing and uh, the first night back. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Steve. Hey, listen, it's, yeah, it's our pleasure to be here with you tonight. Is there anything that we didn't touch on or any question that I didn't ask you about uh, Ohio going forward that we need to uh, let the fans know about? No, I, I think Ohio's got a full slate of good stake races all summer, and uh, both Northfield Park and El Dorado Sayota Downs would uh, welcome you anytime to enjoy their product. And uh, we're hoping to have all of our fairs racing as well. So uh, we're ready to go, and I plan on seeing you at Delaware, David. Yes. And Bring the fish. <laughs>
You stole my thunder. That was going to be my last question. How many how many bags of fish and caramel apples and things like that do I need to bring for the booth? You tell me. Uh, several. Hopefully we'll be able to side by side by then. Hey, thanks well, for coming Steve. on the show tonight. We had a lot of fun. We always do when you and I get together. And listen, I sincerely hope that, you know, I get to see you hop in my car on that, uh, you know, that uh, Friday morning, Saturday morning uh, in September. Okay, buddy? Sounds good. All right. Well, Steve, thanks for being here. And, you know, there's another horse in this race that I wanted to bring up and talk a little bit about. And Roger and I were there, Wildfire Sealster, who yeah. has bought this, uh, this in January at a sale over here in Springfield. And it was bought by Morgan Hagerman. And the interesting thing is, uh, and I, that horse went up for sale with two uh, with another one at the auction, and the winning bidder got to choose which horse they wanted. And wow. the Hagerman Farm they chose Wildfire Sealster at that sale. So um, you know, a very interesting thing. They tried something different at the sale at the auction and put two horses up there. They bid on it. The winning bidder got the choice of which horse they wanted to, and. Uh, that was uh, the Wildfire Sealster. In fact, somebody just asked what was the backstory with it, and I'm, I'm wondering if that's what they were referring to. Um, but uh, an interesting concept at the auction. By the way, it was both horses were in the Burke stable, and they were going to be in the same class. And so they couldn't, <laughs> they didn't want to have the two horses, so they put them both in the sale, and then whoever was the top bidder got the choice, and Hagerman's took Wildfire Sealster. Three starts. Three wins, they've won twenty-seven thousand, and they paid twenty-three thousand, so they got their original investment back already. And they made Three the horse. right choice. They yeah, the right horse. <laughs> yep. Thanks so for bringing that good. up, Frank. I forgot about that. Just one of my few little notes here that I that <laughs> I wrote down, but you know. You should see my desk. It's I got papers I everywhere. <laughs> hey, hey, Frank, I'll tell you what. Yep. When I do the Hamiltonian show on CBS Sports Network, you should see the set. Oh, we have. We, you should see everything that I have in front of me. It's it's unbelievable. And, and usually, because it's a little windy, we've got to have things stamped down. And it's it's a hundred <laughs> degrees by the way that day too. So I, I I get your pain. I know how it works, especially under a live situation. And it's funny, Dave, I, you know, I told you earlier, I did Ohio State baseball play-by-play -play for 20-some years, and uh, they're getting ready to go to the gate. But, you know, we always, did, my broadcast partner and I always said, window open no matter how cold or how windy. So you'd have stuff, coffee cups, you'd have rocks, whatever you could find there to oh, make yeah. sure, you know, nothing blew away. But uh, they're getting ready fans. to go to the gate. Yeah. Um, Derek, you got your camera ready? Roger, yep, you're ready um, with the call? We got yep. the eighth. Hey, by the way, through seven races were 570,000. 570 through seven. See what the handle is on this one. And, you know, a good handle on this one could set it up to possibly hit that million dollars. Carter has called the horses to the gate. $18,000 open trot from the inside out. Peggy Sue, Cantab Lindy, Dylan the Great, working it on Broadway, Classic Venture, Wildfire Sealster, Eye of a Tiger AS, and Milford C. Tam. The gate swings around the turn, and there they go. All stride at the start, Dylan the Great, and working it on Broadway. Off stride at the start, going for the lead. That's Ken Tab Lindy with the lead. Wildfire Sealster up on the outside, now second and going right on. Peggy Sue gets away third as they race around the turn. Classic Venture racing fourth, racing fifth. It's Eye of a Tiger AS uh, racing next as they race around the turn. It's Dylan the Great. Opening quarter and 28 and one. He entered the lane first time, coming to the three eighths mark. Wildfire Sealster and leads the way for Tyler Smith. Right there, second is Cantab Lindy, trotting third. Peggy Sue, Classic Venture is fourth. Fifth is Eye of a Tiger AS, racing six. 
into the turn, Dylan the Great racing seventh as they race around the turn, go on to the halfway point, halfway home in 58, on to the backside, 29 and four, second panel, on to the backside in the 5 eighths mark. It's Wildfire Sealster and Tyler Smith getting their way on the front. With the lead second is Cantab Lindy coming to the outside. Here comes Peggy Sue and Brady Galliers. Now third, now second and closing on the outside with every stride. Out to follow the cover. Eye of a Tiger AS. Brought the three quarters, 126 and three, 28 and three. Backside, little more than an eight to go. The leader, it's Wildfire Sealster. Outside, Peggy Sue. Ready to come three wide. Eye of the Tiger AS. Into the stretch they come. Cantab Lindy ducks to the inside. Coming on. Eye of the Tiger AS on the outside. Doesn't get there. Looks like Peggy Sue. Oh, Hangs tough. Close. But it is a it's photo close. for win in 155-1-5. One that's our closest photo finish of the night. I don't know if I could call that one, but we'll have to wait and see. But what a good finish, and uh, what, a, what a surprising turn of events behind the gate when uh, we had two breakers, including the big, big favorite there. I know it happens. It's trotters. It is what it is, but uh, unbelievable. Roger, your horse might oh, have held on. I don't know. Inquiry is up. If yeah, you that, that, that's normal when they're breakers in any race, Frank, so we're not surprised by that. Hopefully that won't... Uh, delay the result but here here's the slow-mo replay as i'm watching on my phone right now and i don't know the angle we spoke about that earlier so here it is if oh. it's any indication the camera guy after the race is over zeroed in on peggy sue well Oof. Ooh, i don't it's know gonna be, it's, i don't know i can't tell from I don't that know. angle that could be a dead heat. I, I mean, it's that close. It's one inch either way. And a hundred thousand dollar pool right there. By the guy, by the way, guys, one hundred one five two four. If this was so, Yonkers a few years ago, the seven would have won by like a long neck. So yeah. and that was an outside angle. Uh, I, honestly, I thought the one won watching the race, but yeah. when they went down low. It kind of looked like the seven might have gotten there. So I, I'm going to trust my sources okay. and tell me about the outside. The seven. Elliot Deaton is staying in the sulky. Brady Galliers has got out of the sulky on the one, Peggy Sue. So if it's any indication, Elliot Deaton thinks he's the winner. All right. Hey, who was doing that paddock on uh, Peggy Sue? That wouldn't have been Wendy Ross, would it? No, I, I didn't get a good yeah. look. No. I, I didn't get a good enough look, but, you know, it, it could have been her. It's a female. Now, Brady Gallier's just got back into the sulky. They don't. They don't know. That's the bottom line. We gotta wait. We gotta wait. Both horses are still out on the track. Walking around. <laughs> what a way. What a way to end our broadcast, huh? With a with a. I'll tell you. I got. I didn't pick the seven, but I had my long shot, Peggy Sue. It's a dead. So you know who I want. To, uh oh. It says dead heat at the top. Does it? Like yeah. the seven's coming yeah, back. The seven is coming back to the heat. heat. Both so is the one. Heat. It's a, a could it heat? be a dead heat? It is a dead heat, Roger. There you go. They're both coming back, so there you go. It does say dead photo heat inquiry dead heat at the top. Well, the right. first night of racing and we got a dead heat. What would the odds of that be? Pretty high, the, Frank. The inquiry <laughs> sign, I'm sure it <laughs> involves those breaking horses at the start of the race. Dead heat for win. Number seven, Eye of a Tiger AS. ACL Stateri Ab. Kel Johansson. Trainer is Annette Lawrenston and Elliot Deaton. Peggy Sue. Well, you guys are owned by Brady, trained and driven by Brady Galliers. Owned by the Galliers Racing, Defiance, Ohio. Dead uh, heat just, for uh, win. So can see the uh, I just put the picks back up one more time because we're going to be leaving after this one. Uh, but I just wanted everybody to look at the bo bottom name there uh, when it comes up. See that? Uh, the number seven. Uh, I believe I had one right for the, for the night. So we'll take some credit with that. You know, uh, 
I'm happy. You know, I didn't, you know, I would have liked to win it alone, but I'll take the dead heat though. So that's not too bad, but, uh, um, but did that. And, uh, a win still is not a win official and, yet. A win is a win. Right, right, a win's right. a win. And you know what? Looking at this right now, I got the handle at six hundred eighty thousand six hundred and one dollars. And if if it's to believe, be, be believed, I heard that the record handle was in the seven hundred thousand range for Sayoto. So that means that the, it's a lock to to hit that and and maybe hit the million dollar mark where you know four races left. They got four races to go. Got to do eighty thousand a race the rest of the way out. So we'll see what they uh, they do with that. Um, before we leave, too, um, I, you know, uh, I want to thank uh, both Derek and David for coming on tonight. Thank you very much. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. You know, it, it was a uh, put something together. Uh, technically, it wasn't it wasn't the smoothest thing in the world, believe me. But you know, it was. It, it, we really weren't worried about the technical side of it. We were really worried, uh, or what we wanted to do was get get some, you know, have some fun. And I think we had a lot of fun tonight because, you know, for the last 52 days, there hasn't been much fun, you know, in, in this industry. A lot of people wondering what was going to happen, a lot of people waiting, um, a lot of people trying to figure out how they were going to pay to feed their horses, and a lot of people wondering how they were going to make ends meet. So today, though, is the first day that we're back on that road to recovery that people are getting out. Um, and now now the next thing we need is to get some fans at the track. That's going to come. We need to get the rest of the states up. We need to get New Jersey up. We need to get New York up. Indiana will be coming up uh, later um, this month, uh, early part of next month. Uh, somehow Pennsylvania has got to get there. That uh, I don't want to get into the politics, but that seems like that's a whole mess over there, um, trying to figure out what they're going to do there. But, uh, you know, but this is a good first step tonight. And I want to thank you guys uh, for being a part of it. So um, we're going to start. It's now official. It is a dead heat. So, uh, um, you know, I get I get a credit for a winner. So that's good. So um, before we leave, um, Derek, final comments? It's just a great night of racing here at Scioto. I mean, the, the races have been interesting, exciting. They've been interesting to handicap. And it just shows you how the handle itself, the 680,000 we've already seen, shows you how many people out there really love this sport, want to play this sport, want to watch this sport. And I'm just glad it's back. Dave? Well, I want to thank you, Frank, for putting this all together. Nobody knows how difficult something like this is because we've never done it before. So it's from the technical aspect, you know, it was pretty seamless, you know, a, a hiccup here and there. Listen, this is not easy stuff. We all understand that. I want to thank Derek and, of course, Roger, who I always enjoy uh, being able to broadcast with when it comes to live TV. We have so much fun together. And you, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, th this is a fun night. You know, it really is. To the fans – who were out there watching tonight, if they happen to still be with us on the air, please leave comments on the OHHA site if you enjoyed our broadcast tonight, because you never know, maybe we'll be able to get to do it next Friday night, you know, or as long as, you know, until Derek and I actually have to go back to work. So thank you to you. Thank you to everybody that made it possible, especially the sponsors. And I had a lot of fun, so let's do it again. And the payoffs in the last race, the eighth race was Peggy Sue. <laughs> they ended up my betting my long shot. How do you like that? Four twenty, four twenty-three dollars. I have a Tiger AS five forty-five, forty-three eighty. Wildfire Sealster four twenty, twenty cent Super thirty-seven twenty, twenty cent Superfecta forty-two, forty-six on the seven. I got to say one thing. Nobody noticed or commented about. I still got the beard, but somebody else shaved their beard today because he's got a special thing going on hey. tomorrow. Franks, what's what's going on tomorrow? Well, my son's graduating high school. It's you know everybody talked about these 2020 graduates. I had two of them. I had a daughter graduating from John Carroll University, a softball player who last lost her senior season. Um, and just, uh, you know, graduated, but she's going on to physical therapy school. My son, a 2020 school graduate, he graduates uh, tomorrow is the, vi the virtual on, t on TV, and then uh, Sunday is the drive through And uh, basically the wife said, uh, we're taking pictures. The beard's gone. So uh, I had a haircut scheduled for this morning. So what's that? 
Congratulations, Frank, from all of us here in New thank Jersey. You. There you go, man. Well, thank you very much. I'm proud of both of my kids and uh, proud for everything. Before we leave, one more time, I just want to thank our sponsors, Kim Hill uh, Real Estate, uh, Cool Winds Farm, uh, Equine Equipment. Um, the, we also had Hagerman Farms as a sponsor, Ohio State Veterinary Medical Center, and I've got one more, um, Equine Equipment. So I want to thank uh, the four of them for being a part of this um, and helping us out with everything. So, and Zentera Co-op and Purina Animal Nutrition. So thanks to them. Gentlemen, thank you so much. It's been a great night. Um, I know I'm going to watch the rest of them. And uh, we're going to do it again real soon. Uh, I promise that. We're going to make sure we got a little better on the technical end. But we're going to go from there. Guys, I hope you have a great evening. And stay safe and stay sane out there. Happy Memorial Thank you very Day much. Weekend. 12 more races tomorrow. Yep. That's what we got. Memorial we'll talk to you all soon. All right. all right. We'll talk to you all soon. Have a great one. Have a great night. Good night, all.